this morning. Uh, in the matter of the uh, state of Georgia versus Cleef Adams et al. in 22 SC 183572. Uh, Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Botts and Mr. Sharp. Good morning, gentlemen. All right, Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele. Uh, good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and uh, Mr. Weinstein. Hold on, hold up, hold up. You can't tell me him. Good morning, Good morning. Hold on, just hold up, hold up, hold up, Brown. Hold up, hold up. All right, Mr. Huey, Mr. Matthews uh, Sr., good morning. All right, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Harvey, uh, good morning. All right, Mr. Ryan and Misty Williams, good morning. All right, Mr. Smith and Mr. Atkins, good morning. All right. Okay, uh, we have Mr. White, who's um, we're going to bring out, and our jurors are all available. So let's go ahead and bring Mr. White out, please. Sergeant Ingram, if you go ahead and summon our jurors for us, please, sir. You may. Matthews, don't worry about it. Okay, so appreciate you telling me. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Just when the jury comes out, uh, comes out. Okay.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, the jury. Good morning. All right, we're going to continue with our examination of our last minute witness, Mr. White. Thank Go you. ahead, sir. Good morning, Mr. White. Yesterday, I had asked you to recognize the in the courtroom. You remember that, right? Uh, you actually, you know Little Rod, right? You're friends with him? You remember when Lieutenant Olafon and I met you on March 26th of this year at Fort County Jail? You said that you knew him before you went to prison? You have to answer no, no. yes or no, sir. I don't know nobody in the courtroom right now. So you, you're not tied with Little Rod and all the control out there keeping out there? I don't know that, man. You, you also know who shot who, don't you? You, 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 know, you, know. you try to make me make, uh, know who shot who. You didn't, uh, you don't know Walter Murphy? Sometimes known as DK? I mean, you told me, him. You didn't tell Detective Dennis and Detective Decker on July 13th, 2015, that Walter Murphy, the guy who walks around with a D and a K tattoo between his eyebrows, was the person you saw at the Sitco gas station? If you talking about the dude who tried to bribe me? Walter Murphy tried to bribe you? No, I'm talking about your people. My people tried to bribe me. How do you try to bribe me, Mr. White? Trying to get me to tell somebody I don't know. How can we get on you to tell on somebody you don't know when you picked him out nine years ago on April 12, 2015? Man, I don't even know Walter Murphy. I don't know nobody by the name of no Walter Murphy. Nine years ago. Mr. White, I'm going to approach you with State's Exhibit 73 Bravo Bravo.
who don't want to testify get subpoenas to come forward. You understand that? Nah, you hold me in my, my own will. So I'm approaching you with what's been marked as 73 Bravo Bravo. I'm going to ask you to take a look at it. You all have seen 73 Bravo Bravo defense counsels? I have now. Okay. All right. So, Mr. White, I'm showing you the first page of 73 Bravo Bravo. I'm showing you the second page of 73 Bravo Bravo. And I'm showing you page three of Bravo Bravo. Do you see is that your signature, Mr. White? I mean, I didn't say my first and last name. I mean, but that could have been anybody's signature. So it does, it is your first and last name, but you're saying it's not your signature here on page three on the far right top left photograph. Not my signature. Okay. Now, Mr. White, I also want to show you the last page, which is page six. You see this photograph in the bottom left, that circle. Is that the same initials that we just saw a second ago, Mr. White? Them look like two different signatures. Is that the same initials as your name, D.W.? Of course, because my name is D.W., but it don't mean I did that. Okay, so you didn't sign or initial either of those pages in 73 Bravo Bravo? Bravo. No. Okay, thank you, Mr. White. Now, do you know many people or anyone else that has a D and a K tattoo between their eyebrows other than Walter Murphy? I don't even know Walter Murphy. Why you keep trying to make me know someone? Mr. White, would you agree that someone who had, is that tattoo unique? Two letters between their eyebrows? Is that unique? Means a million people in the world. Have you ever seen anyone that has D and a K between their eyebrows? Mr. No. When Lieutenant Olafon and I met you in Fulton County Jail, you said that Walter Murphy you knew, correct? Okay, same day you keep saying you met me at Fulton County, right? Right. I told you I didn't know Walter Murphy. You saying I know Walter Murphy, but the same day you met me, it's the same dude, an hour before you met me, the bald head dude back there, told him I don't know Walter Murphy. And Mr. White, you said that Walter Murphy and Jeffrey Wilson are like this, he crossed fingers, right? You said that. And Mr. White, when you go like this, like you did with being with Ten Olafon in Cole County Jail, this means someone's tight, right? Someone's close. You cross your fingers. I guess if that's what you want to put. Have you ever seen someone or ever put your fingers crossed like this, saying that two people are friends? Have you ever done that, Mr. White? No, because I, I don't do that. You remember sitting in the library in Cole County Jail with Ten Olafon out around the table? Yeah, and you were asking me something, and I told you I didn't know. And I asked you, you turn the whole part right there, since you grew up in Cleveland, on Old Hayville, did you know anyone from that area? And you said you knew Walter Murphy, right? I don't know Walter Murphy. And, Mr. White, you also said that you don't think that Walter Murphy realized you were in the car the day that the shooting happened. Because you and him are actually cool with one another, right? I don't even know him. Walter Murphy sounded like a white person. Then. And you also said that you ran into Walter Murphy, you may know Miss DK, in the Fulton County Jail after the shooting, and there was no problems between the two of y'all, right? How much do you folk paying you to um try to make it seem like I know these people? Mr. White, you did not say that you saw Walter Murphy in the Fulton County Jail after the April 12, 2015 shooting. Is that your testimony here today? I didn't been to prison. This is my second time in prison, so I ran into a lot of people. So I ain't tell you I know Walter Murphy. So, Ms. White, remember yesterday I asked you if you remember a phone conversation you had on July 13, 2015 with Atlanta Police Department Detective Dennis. You remember that, right? No. Now, on that call, you explained to him what happened to Pooh that night, didn't you? I was in, I was in prison July. Man, I did two years in prison, man. 
Our probation violation. I got out 10-17-17. Mr. White, when you talk to Detective Dennis, on the phone, he didn't say you told him what happened that night to prove, did you? No. Did you? Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis that OG Bentley and his partner walked in the store, so my partner got out of the car, he was fixing to go in the store, but the girl was talking to him about how they felt you were on their tail, correct? That's what you told Detective Dennis? Incorrect. Mr. White, you also told Detective Dennis and so when OG Bentley's partner came out of the store, he seen my partner and the girl talking, and so he felt that they were, you know, trying to get at each other. Right? Wrong. Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you if your partner uh, and the female from the other car were arguing or exchanging words. And you told him the girl and my partner were not arguing. It was normal talk. She was like, dang, y'all pushing up. It was just like y'all were on our tail. And so he was like, he felt like we was on his tail. When OG Bentley's partner came out of the store, he went back in the store and told OG Bentley that was like such and such out here. You didn't tell Detective Dennis that over the phone? No. Detective Dennis asked you to clarify about what you meant when you told him such and such and told you to give him words, right? And this is your response. I don't understand. I was not in their face. So I was not at OG Bentley's face or his partner's face. OG Bentley's partner came out of the store and looked, boom, and he seen my partner and the girl who was driving talking. And so I guess he thought they was exchanging numbers or trying to get at his girl, right? Wrong. Mr. White went on to explain to Detective Dennis. So he went back in the store, told OG Bentley what was going on. OG Bentley stayed in the store for like a good 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. He did not come out. Then after that, about five to 10 minutes later, a white Dodge Nitro G 4x4 pulled up to the gas station, right? Wrong. You told Detective Dennis that the white Dodge Nitro would pull up on the side of OG Bentley and their car, right? No. And Mr. White, you then told Detective Dennis that the people in the white Dodge Nitro got out of the car with AKs and sticks and 40s and shit and came to our car like they was, uh, like, what's popping and all that? Why would I be telling you something if this ain't even, it's not even my case. This ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't involved in nothing. I ain't shoot nobody. I didn't rob nobody. This don't have nothing to do with me. So why would I be giving you some information about something? This ain't got nothing to do with me. Mr. White, I'm talking about the conversation you had with Detective Dennis. Bro, you lying like fuck, man. This is not, man. Come on, man. So, Mr. White, do you know what an AK, sticks, and 40s are? You do too? I'm asking you, Mr. White. I'm asking you questions. Nah, I don't. Did any of the convictions you talked about the day before involve firearms, like the armed robbery? I'm convicted for my armed robbery. Yeah, two of them. Did any of your crimes you talked about involve an AK, a stick, or a 40? You talking about in my case? Yeah. No. You never heard of an AK or a 40, Mr. White? Yeah, I played. I I played um played with it on Call of Duty. Yeah, if that's okay, what you're so talking you're about. With some video games. Mr. White, you also said so. My partner was like, "Man, it ain't nothing like that going on. It's nothing about nothing going on." And they came up to the car, with AK sticks and forties, right? Why would I be saying that? These don't have nothing to do with me. It's not making no sense at all. Mr. White, this is not my case. I didn't shoot nobody. I didn't rob nobody. So why would I be? Telling you anything or telling your group of people anything. Mr. White? Why? That bullet could have struck you in the car on April 12th, 2015. Could have. Struck who? Um, I'll overrule the objection. Hey, Mr. White? Use the microphone, uh, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Is it on? Uh, I don't believe it is, Mr. Speaker, but I need to fix it. Mr. White, that bullet on April 12, 2015, when you were sitting in the back seat of the Blue Ford Escape, could have struck you, potentially, right? Wrong. What are you, like, what are you getting out of this? Mr. White, you ducked when you saw that bullet come through the windshield because you were scared, right? I was at a gas station. Before the shooting, right? 
They weren't shooting, nobody wasn't shooting at me. Were they shooting at someone that you knew? Why you keep trying to make me know the dude? I don't know him, that's not my partner, we were never friend, nothing. But do you remember a time that you just left the gas station and a car you were driving in was shot? I know, I know they were saying the dude got shot in the head when I ran from the gas station. Okay, so you ran from the gas station the same night that he got shot. That's what you're saying? Because I was on first offender probation. Like I told you yesterday, I had a firearm on me, and I ran. Now... Why would I sit right there if the police going to pull up to when somebody got shot at? Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis that one of the guys who got out of the white Dodge Nitro started pump faking like they were coming to the car, pump faking like they was fixing to pull up shooting, right? No. Do you know what it means when someone pump fakes with a gun? I know when you pump fake playing basketball, that's what you're talking about. What's it mean when someone pump fakes playing basketball? I'll get you in there. And then I may jump, try to block it, and you score with my head. Is that right? And then I go around you. So if someone's pump faking with a gun, are they acting like they're going to shoot you if they don't? I guess. Mr. White, you described Detective Dennis that the person pulled out that bitch like they was fixing to shoot. So my partner drove off, everybody in the car, they ducked their head off because you thought they were fixing to shoot. Right? Wrong. Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis that we drove down there by cemetery like boom. And you know that trucking company on the left. Right? Left. I'm gonna publish what's already been admitted to six exhibit seventy three Bravo Bravo. Mr. White, you remember yesterday we were talking about that trucking lot across from Dallas Elementary on Jones Hill Road? You remember that, right? Sure, it's not 72. I guess. My apologies, Your Honor. 72 by the All right. Mr. White, on that screen to your left, it's going to come up here in just a second. I'm going to grab this pointer. Mr. Wright, if you don't mind swirling around real, real quick, I'm going to ask you a question. When we're talking about the trucking lot with Detective Dennis, is this what you were talking about right here? Uh, I never told you about no trucking. I never even talked to you about that. This don't even have nothing to do with me. Like, you keep trying to place me something. Like, you trying to, like, put me on the case or something? Like, what you trying to do? This ain't got nothing to do with me. Mr. White, are you scared to testify here today? Why would I be scared to testify something if we ain't got nothing to do with me? Why were you able to answer questions about what happened when the investigators I met with you, but you can't answer them here today? I was in prison. Then you got a piece of paper that got my signature on there, and my signature. Now, Mr. White, you then told the text this, you turned down Harvard by Dodge Elementary, correct? Listen, I don't know what you got going on. But this is not my case. Mr. White, I'm going to show you something. Can you just take a look with me? Just bear with me. When you told Detective Dennis you turned down Harper Road by Dobbs Elementary, you're talking about right here, right? I never told you I told him Harper. I don't even got license, so I didn't turn. So how would I drive? Well, Neil was driving, right? Was but driving. you just said, I said, you just said, I turned on Harper. I don't even got a license. So you do, was it I drive or somebody else drive? And we turned down Mark by Dodge Elementary. People that you were in the car with, Mr. White. That's what you said. Mr. White, you then told the detective this that you all came down Harbor Street and came to a stop sign, correct? But I didn't even talk to you. This only have nothing to do with me. Mr. White. Why is I'm here? Mr. White, can you take a look at me at, at this screen? I'm trying to go back to prison. This does not have nothing to do with me. Mr. White, can you at least look at the screen? You can't make me look at the screen. I just want to go back to prison. 
It's been my 10 year bid. Go on. You disturbed me from when I was at prison doing my time. Talking about something that had 10 years ago that I don't know. Mr. White, when you said y'all went down Harper Road and stopped at a stop sign, there is a stop sign on Harper Road, right? I never told you I was on Harper Road. <laughs> so you never told Detective Dennis you were on Harper Road? Oh. So what, what exhibit are you showing him? Uh, I'm just 72 right. Bravo Bravo. Okay, all right. The physical copy. All right. <laughs> now, you told the Detective Dennis, Mr. White, that we had to stop at the stop sign because there was a stop sign. The way that they was coming was back down the street the other way, right? I don't even know what you're talking about. And when you told Detective Dennis they were, they were coming back down the other way, you're talking about the white Dodge Nitro, right? Who is they? When you told Detective Dennis that they was coming down the other way from where y'all were in Harper, you're talking about the white Dodge Nitro, right? I didn't tell you nothing. And that white Dodge Nitro was coming down Browns Mill Road, right? If that's what you said. That's not what you told Detective Dennis? <laughs> that what you told the Detective Dennis. So I'm on the. It was me and not you. That's all. Man, I was in prison. How you gonna put me in something, man? Mr. White. I'm keep telling you, but it don't have. Like, this is not my case. You just automatically flew me up here. For what? I'm not involved in none of this. Mr. White. You told the Detective Dennis that I guess that they seen us. That it was us and they fired shots. Boom, boom. That's what you told the Texas Dennis, right? How somebody, who is they? How are they seeing me if I told you shots were fired? I had a firearm on me. I ran to the nearest side street, called my sister to pick me up. So how did I get from, so what, my sister dropped me back off over there? It don't even make sense. Mr. White, I'm going to, I'm asking you questions and asking you to answer. I don't have to answer nothing. You can answer it however you seem fit, but I'm gonna keep asking you questions. We can be here as long and short as you want. You understand that, right? It don't matter to me. I got three years left till I mess out, so my time's still running. Mr. White, after they shot you, you told Detective Dennis, you were like, everybody all right, everybody all right. So everybody started checking itself. Nobody was bleeding, nobody was shot, the driver wasn't shot, but the passenger was not saying that. And so we were driving, and his head started leaning to the side like he was dozing off. Right? What, he was on drugs? Mr. White, you then told the Detective Dennis that as you all kept driving, you were like, who? Who? He wasn't saying anything, so we thought he was dead. Right? Thought who was dead? I was gone. And Mr. White, when you told the Detective Dennis that you thought who was dead, that's why you called 911. Possibly save his life, right? How did I call 911 if I told you I left my phone? So I didn't call 911. So whoever you were talking to, or whoever y'all were talking to? Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you what Pooh's real name is. And you say, you don't know his real name, but his nickname is Pooh. P-O-O-H, right? I don't even know no poo, man. You keep saying that. It sound like a goddamn girl name. And, Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you who was driving, and you told him Neil. N-I-E-L, right? I don't even know what you're talking about, man. And, Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis, I was sitting in the back. Me and my other two partners, I was sitting behind the driver. My other partner, he was 16, he was sitting in the middle. Right? Uh, no. And Mr. White, you then said my other partner was sitting behind the passenger who got shot. He was 17, right? No. You told Detective Dennis, I don't know the one in the middle name. I know his nickname is Crucial. Crucial like Club Crucial. You said that, right? I don't even go to the club. So I don't need to my club Crucial. I don't go club. Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis the last person in the back seat was being crucial. Their first name was Carrion, right? 
No, you said that. I don't even know him. Mr. White, you described crucial to Detective Dennis as short. He's like five feet. I'm taller than him. I'm like six feet, six one, and crucial's five six, five seven, right? No. How tall are you, Mr. White? Six three. You're six three? Pretty tall. Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you to describe carry on. And you said he had dreads. At first, he didn't have dreads. He had an afro, then he had dreads, like I had dreads, but my dreads were longer than his. And you had to cut them off because you went to Clay County, right? You went and got a picture of me with some dreads. You never told Detective Dennis that you had dreads kind of like Carry On did that night? I ain't told you nothing like that. And. You told Detective Dennis, I just got out of Clayton County, so I didn't get my hair cut. Or I had to get my hair cut, right, Mr. White? I don't recall nothing you saying. You remember yesterday when you said that you were on first offender probation and you couldn't have a firearm, right? Yeah, and that's why I told you I ran. So how could you put me on the scene of being in the car with somebody if I told you I ran to a side street, called my sister and got picked up? So how could you put me in the car? So the D'Angelo White that Detective Dennis spoke with, who said that on April 12, 2015, they were on first offender probation out of Clayton County with someone other than you? Had it been. Detective Dennis asked you if you know the guys that pulled out the sticks, and you tell him you don't know them, but you've seen them before, right? Who are you talking about? And Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis one of the shooter's names was DK. Because in the middle of his head, by his eyebrow, it says DK. Because it says DK in the middle of his eyebrow, right? I never even knew that dude. You you came to me at Wheeler and asked me something about a dude named Walter Murphy. I don't even know no no dude by no name Walter Murphy. You like so you don't know nobody by the name of DK. How you gonna make me know somebody? Mr. White, when I met you, it was 2024. It was this year, right? Right. So when you were talking to Detective Dennis in 2015, you and me had never met, right? Right. Mr. White, you then said Detective Dennis asked you if you've seen the other guys who got out alongside DK. And you told him no, they had masks on, right? I never talked to no investigator, nothing. Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you how long was it when you left the gas station until the shooting started, right? You remember that? How am I gonna remember a shoot? I'm trying, I'm trying to get the hell on. I got a firearm on me. I ain't trying to. I don't remember shooting. And Mr. White, in response to that, you said we came down Jonesville Road. Jonesville Road has a cemetery, not that far, and so it was like a good three to five minutes, right? How could I be on Jonesville Road if I told you my sister came pick me up and I ran? And Mr. White, you then said, so we came and we turned right on Harper. We made it at that stop sign, that stop sign, and then boom, we went down there. First you said I turned right on Harper. Then you said we. So is it I turned right or we? Because I went there. Mr. White, you were directly behind the driving wheel, right? Wrong. I wasn't even there. Mr. White, you then told Detective Dennis that when y'all stopped at the stop sign, the way that they was coming, there's not a stop sign. Right? No, you probably told him that. Because in 2015, there was no stop sign at Brownsville Road, but there was one on Harper, right? I have been in prison seven years. This case that you keep talking about, whatever going on in 2015, that down there 10 years ago, I haven't been on the streets. In a long time. Shit changed, so I don't know what are you talking about. That wasn't me. Mr. White, Harbor Road and Brownsville are on that map that I showed you yesterday. 72 Bravo Bravo, right? Yeah, it say Harbor on that map. And you were familiar with that map when I showed it to you yesterday, right? Because you grew up in Lincoln. My auntie stayed in Lincoln. And Mr. White, you told the Texas Dennis that they recognized the car because we was the only two people at the gas station. So when they seen us, they shot like two times, right? 
I'm going to tell you again, why would I be telling you or anything, anybody else, if this is not my case? I wouldn't even tell on myself. So why would I? Mr. White, you told Detective Dennis he was not a regular bullet. It wasn't a 40, it wasn't a 45, it wasn't a 9, it was a chopper bullet that shot two times. Those were your words, right? No. One of them missed, and one went through the windshield and hit my partner Pooh in the head, right? Why you keep trying to pin Pooh as my opponent if I keep telling you I do not know the dude? I'm asking you about your own words to Detective Dennis at the Atlanta Police Department. Don't worry, not my words. Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you if you stopped, and you told him you never stopped. After you left the gas station, you skated past. Boom, you went another way so they wouldn't follow you. Do you remember that, Mr. White? How could I stop if I keep telling you I got picked up? So you would be you were talking to somebody else or you had to be, man, because if I keep telling you I had a firearm and I ran, got to the nearest side of the street and paid my sister to come pick me up right then ASAP, how could I be still be on Harper and Lakewood if I went back home, Cleveland Avenue? Mr. White, when you need an investigator back before, you were always respectful to me and I was respectful with my best Is that true? I ain't said nothing disrespectful to you. You were. That's correct, right? So, so how, how is I'm disrespectful? I ain't call you out your name. And when we met, we were able to talk more easily than these questions are here today. Is that true, Mr. White? Man, what did I tell you when you came and seen me? That you don't want, Mr. White, you said you don't want to testify, but you remembered everything that I said. Isn't that true? I'm not testifying against you, man. I don't know nothing. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This ain't my case. I'm serving my own senior bitch. And after you said that, Mr. White, you talked about what happened to Pooh that night and you were in the car. Isn't that true? I don't even know Pooh. Now, Mr. I can't even tell you the dude's name. I don't know that man. Mr. White. Detective Dennis asked you if you all stopped. And the second part of what you said was we turned down Harvard, we were going back to where we were hanging out in Lakewood. We came by the stop sign and they started shooting. Right, Mr. White? You just going to place me somewhere I wasn't. Mr. White, you, you told Detective Dennis on this phone call that you made sure everybody was straight. Everybody, they're good, they're good. Pooh's head started sliding down and you rolled up the street <coughs> to my nearest partner's house so we can call. Right? I wasn't there. You keep telling me your head slid down. Well, he was high on something, drunk. And Mr. White, you said you called, you got Pooh out of the car, and he was still talking even though there was a bullet in his head. Right, Mr. White? I wasn't there. He was still talking. Blood was coming down. He was still talking. Right? I wasn't there. Detective Dennis asked you if you saw which side of the car the shots came out. You told him it couldn't be from the passenger side or the back passenger side, right? I don't know nothing about that. And you also told him it had to be, it couldn't be the driver either. It had to be the person behind the driver, right? I don't know nothing about that. I was gone, long gone. So, Mr. White, that was your word to attack again, correct? No. So when you told Detective Dennis, like I mentioned earlier, that Walter Burton was one of the shooters, you weren't exactly able to see who was shooting, but you saw him in the chopper of the sitcom, right? Who is Walter Murphy? DK. See, I knew you knew who he was. You do too, right, Mr. White? No. Now, Mr. White, after you checked on everybody, 
you told Detectives asked you if you were to show you a photographic lineup of BK, would you be able to identify him? And you told him yes, right? Did I or did somebody else tell me? Detective Dennis asked you if you were to show you a photographic lineup of someone that you knew as DK, would you be able to identify them? And you said yes. Is that correct? No. Detective Dennis asked for your location to come do the photo lineup. You told him, bro, I'm saying though, I'll tell you all that, but you can't be putting my name in nothing. Right? Why would I be telling you anything if this don't have nothing to do with me? Mr. White? This case don't even have nothing to do with me. I'm just here free willing on the free ride trip because you brought me up here. I never told you I was testifying against nobody. I don't even know, know none of these guys in the courtroom. Mr. White, you're between a rock and a hard place from your friend who gets shot. That's not, not my friend. Who right? is not my friend? I don't know no who. You didn't want Pooh to die that night if you called 911, did you? I didn't call 911. Listen, he could have died. He could have did whatever. He don't got nothing to do with me. My life, I'm still in good health. I didn't get shot. It wouldn't have bothered you regardless of how close or not close you were if someone that you knew truly died after riding the car with you and getting shot. Bro, you see... A lot of people on the news get shot. You probably don't feel no type of way because you don't know them. I'm asking you, Mr. White, if you're sitting in the car right behind I you. I wasn't you. sitting in the car with nobody. I didn't touch nobody. Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you if you've seen your partner proof since this happened. And you told him, I've not seen it ever since then because I stay over there. I stopped coming over there for like two months after all those shootings were going on. I stopped staying over there. Right? I probably would locked up. I don't know what you're telling me. Mr. White, you ask Tech Dennis, when you're talking, when is he coming to pull up on you? And he tells you it's going to be about a half hour to do the photo line, right? Wrong. And Mr. White, you told him where everybody would be at who was in the car with you, they're at Lakewood. So I'm going to have to walk to Lakewood. You can meet me at Lakewood, right? What the fuck is I'm walking late with for? Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you for an address. You told him you don't know the address, but asked him if he knows where the cemetery is by the Sitco, right? I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't need people to be here, man. And Mr. White, Detective Dennis confirmed with his <clears throat> cell phone that he was going to come pick you up in about 10 to 20 minutes in an unmarked car, right? Were you shaking your head no, Mr. White? No, no. Now, after this phone call with Detective Dennis, an unmarked ABD police car did come and meet you at your location, correct? No. It was Detective Dennis, who's a male detective, right? If this is the same dude who you keep telling, trying to bribe me to tell him something that don't have nothing to do with me, what are you talking about with the bribe, Mr. White? Oh, well, now you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm asking you. You know everything, yeah? Mr. White, I'm asking you questions. Explain. What are you talking about? And listen, this don't have nothing to do with me. This don't have nothing to do with me. You got me here because I was at a gas station when the shoe happened, and it, it struck a car, and I took off running. So what, what, for, what is I'm here for? I cannot help you on nothing. What car was it? I can't remember, man. That was 2015, man. It's 2024. You do the math on it. Mr. White, you don't recall when Lieutenant Baker, the first time I met you in prison, you said it, it was a blue Ford Focus and it was Neil's rental car, right? You keep telling me all type of lieutenants and all right, man. When I met you, there was two female lieutenants with me. Different people went to child at me, right? Yeah, when you came to see me at prison? Right. And when I came to meet you at the jail, there was another female lieutenant who was different than the one in prison, right? Different person. Uh, yes. Now, 
There also was a detective Gaither that was in that unmarked APB car who's a female, right? How do you keep expecting for me to remember something so long ago? On the lieutenants of the two females that I remember is from this year. I'm going to ask you about the Atlanta Police Department detective. There was a third one, a detective Edwards. There were two males and a female detective who never been in that car, right? I never got in the car with no police. They picked you up at your mom's apartment, right? No, nobody picked me up. And right when you got in the car, you asked them if they could go somewhere else because you really don't want to be in the apartments, right? Why would I be going anywhere else if this don't have nothing to do with me? Why would somebody be coming to my house if this didn't have nothing to do with me? Because you didn't want to be in the apartments because you didn't want someone to see that you were talking to the police, right? I don't even like the police. Mrs. White, you pulled out of the apartments, the driver, and they kept asking you questions about when Cooper shot that night, right? What does this have to do with D'Angelo White? Mr. White, I'm asking about a conversation you yourself had in an unmarked APD car, right? Yeah, I must have planned this. How much they paying y'all? Mr. White. Detective Dennis went back through the event with you while you were in the car. He asked you if you all were arguing or anything, and you said no arguing, right? This is not my case. Well, I'm not arguing with nobody. I don't need, I don't need supposed to be here. Mr. I'm here because you brought me here. Mr. White. I got forced to be here. I'm, I almost got tased by the police because I didn't want to go to court. Mr. White. Why are you so reluctant to come to court and speak about this? What are you talking about? This is not my case. You trying to make you trying to make me you really trying to beat something in my head. Like this is not my case, man. I, yeah, I can tell you, yeah, about my ten year, be it what I did, yeah. It got me here. Yeah. I robbed some people, yeah, they got me here. They get me get my time, yeah. But at this time and moment, this is not my case, man. This is not my case. Mr. White. In that car, Detective Dennis asked you if anybody in your car pulled out anything on us, and you said we had some guns and shit, and you didn't pull anything out, right? How do we have some guns and shit if I left? I keep telling you, I left the sit go. I ran because I had a firearm on me. I'm first in front of probation. Now, the police is going to show up at the store. Why would I be sitting right there with a firearm so I could get locked up? Mrs. White. It's not a coincidence that you told Detective Dennis that we had guns and you just said you had a gun that night, is it? We? I had a gun and ran. I don't know about no we. Don't try to put multiple guns on me. I had one gun. There was other guns in the new Ford Escape that you all were in with the poop, right? Y'all must have got it off whoever was in that car. Y'all y'all didn't get no gun on me. Now, Mr. White, do you recall that while you were driving, you were pointing to the roadway and you said, explain what happened. You were driving up a little bit close. It felt like you were just falling and pushing up on you. Do you remember that, Mr. White? Bro, nobody was following me. Nobody ain't going to push up on me. You go on to tell the text Dennis and Gaither. They pull in there. We pull in there. Boom. They were thinking we were trying to rob them or something. Right? I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. White, you tell Detective Dennis and Detective Gaither that a person named O.G. Bentley, he got some money, right? I don't know no O.G. Bentley. Detective Gaither asked you where O.G. Bentley got paid from. He's a rapper selling where's his money. And you said, nah, the rapper young fellow fucked with him, right? Well, I don't know. You feel me? I don't know what you're talking about. You probably said, I don't know where you getting these information from. And Mr. White, Detective Gaither asked you, it's cool if y'all drive to where the shooting happened so she could see it. And you gave them directions to get to the location, right? Nope. Y'all probably got it from the gas station, man, that the shooting happened, man. Why would I give you a, a location? That nothing happened with me, man. This it like you trying to put it like put me on the scene, put me there. This don't have nothing to do with me. All due respect. This don't have nothing to do with me. I'm serving my own bed. I'm ready to go back to prison. Complete my 36 months off a 10-year bid and go home. 
Ah, vamos ver. A Angie está. A Angie hurt. But you say I'm a victim. Victim means something happened to me. Nothing didn't happen to me. You don't think someone shooting a bullet at someone doesn't make them a victim? Mr. I didn't get shot in the head. Somebody else did. It was not me. My head look all right, man. Mr. White, you remember yesterday, you're 27 now, right? In 2015, you would have been 18, right? You told Detective Dennis, when you spoke with him in the car, he asked you how old you are, and you said you were 18 years old, right? I never spoke with nobody. You keep trying to put me on a case. I cannot help you. Detective Gaither, so <laughs> Ms. White, yesterday you said that you went to Southland, right, to high school? Detective Gaither asked you where you went to high school and you told her South Atlanta, right? I mean, everybody who's staying late will go to Southland. That's just a, that's just an area code. Cleveland Avenue, that's, you're going to go to South Alone. So the D'Angelo White, who was 18 on first in probation in Clay County, and went to South Atlanta, was not you? She was part of that day? I ain't even, I probably wasn't even in school then. I've been dropped out of school. I was going to try to turn to school. Now, Mr. White, you were on first in probation at Clay County when this happened, right? Yes. And when you met the detectives in the car, you told them that you got out of Clay County a day ago on a probation violation, right? You all kept driving, and then you asked the detectives to throw you something in to tell them the shit, right? Throw me what? You went on to clarify $20, because you really could have never said shit. Your other partner in there wasn't going to say shit either. What, what told them, right? the fuck is twenty going to do for me? Detective, this is not my case. Detective Dennis asked you how to know that your friend didn't already say something. And you said you know they wasn't going to say nothing because you know them personally, right? How did how did you come get me from prison? What like if it was four other people or uh, who else was in the car with them four? Why is I'm here and the people? Who witnessed this is not here. Mr. White, I'm asking you about the conversation. Nah, you need to ask them that. You need to ask them that. You can't ask me shit. I was not there. Now, Mr. White, you recall Detective Dennis asking you what you would have wanted the police to do if you caught that bullet in the head and seen your partner and, and told him. Um, what he, do you remember him asking that? What would happen if you caught that bullet? You remember that, Mr. White? You keep trying to ask him about a dude who got shot in the head. The bullet didn't hit me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. And after he got shot in the head, you never were able to see him in person, were you? I probably was incarcerated. And you told Detective Dennis and Detective Gaither, and they asked you why you had to get up to seafood. First of all, man, that shit's too hot now. I did not know what hospital he was at anyway, right? You you keep telling about a person I only seen one time in my life. Why would I be concerned about somebody who I seen only one time in my life? It doesn't make sense. We never kicked to know nothing. And this white detective tell you who's missing a chunk of his head and it's in a rehabilitation center and your response is, I'm just saying though, Nobody in my hood talks to the police anyway. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm the only one who just fuck with them. Just like I told you. Okay. I just told you right here out of my mouth. I don't even like the police. So what the heck? And you, what you told them is that in the neighborhood that you grew up in, it, you, people didn't talk to the police, right? I don't even talk to the police. I don't even pull the beer. You brought me here. And Detective Dennis explains to you after he just shot your partner with a chopper for no reason, that's what makes his job hard. Because when a fuck blank kept walking the street, that's why. Because if nobody does the same thing, he's going to do it again. And it could have been any of y'all. And you're just going to let that ride, not me. And you told him that shit probably already been taken care of. Shit's probably been already taken care of. You remember that, Mr. White? 
taking care of what? And when you told Detective Dennis that his father had already taken care of, you're talking about being handled in the streets, right? They have nothing to do with me. What is I'm... It, all this, what you saying about a dude who getting shot? About a dude who I only seen one time in my life? Why would I be trying to handle anything with him? It don't have nothing to do with me. This is not my case. I didn't get shot. You keep trying to say I'm the victim. How I'm the victim if I didn't get shot in the head? So you have the wrong person. Mr. White, when someone shoots at you, how are you supposed to respond to that if you don't go to the police? What? I'm asking, how would you respond if someone were to shoot at you? How are you, Mr. White, how are you going to handle that? Objection, Your Honor, and also speculation. I stand the objection. Mr. White, you are a human being who has choices, right? If somebody shoot at you, what you going to do? I'm asking you, Mr. White, what you yourself would do. You're like, that calls you're trying to make me. Oh, oh, oh. That calls for speculation, don't answer that. Right. <laughs> And despite being on the streets, Mr. White, you called 911 right after you got shot. Right? Well, you crazy, man. You didn't go back and shoot them or anyone else. You just called to get your help, right? I'm not going to be shooting nobody. And the text Dennis tells you He's still out, still out acting a fool, and you said it's probably still hot. My folks been shooting at his ass. They've been coming back shooting here, right? I don't know nothing about no shooting. So what we were just talking about a minute ago, when I asked you how stuff is handled in the streets, and you told the detective, Dennis, my folks been shooting at his ass. They've been coming back shooting here. That's how it's handled in the streets, right? That's how you want to put it in your mind. I never told you my folks out of nobody. This don't have nothing to do with me. I even I don't even know this dude. Why would I be having somebody shoot at somebody? Somebody I don't know. Miss White, Detective Dennis asked you when does it stop when somebody's baby got shot and you told him somebody's baby, not my baby, right? A baby got shot. You didn't tell Detective Dennis that? Hell, fuck. Nah, I ain't even told you. You going off the wall now. And Mr. White, he asked you, what if they hit your baby trying to get at you? You tell him, you don't have a baby. My mom doesn't even come outside. I tell my mom not to come outside, right? My mom, my mom is not living right now. But she was back in 2015, right? And my mom don't even come outside because she was old. And when you were talking to him about that, your mom grew up, she's going to live in Arnold Higgs on Cleveland, right? Why did your mom not want to come outside? My mom was 60 years old. Why would my mom be coming outside? My mom wanted to come outside to go to work and come home. Why would she be coming outside? My mom, I don't have a young mom, if that's what you're thinking. I'm not thinking that at all. I'm asking you. Told Detective Dennis that your mom doesn't come outside when he's asking if someone innocent got shot. So I'm asking you, why did you think about your mom when you asked you that? I didn't even talk to nobody, bro. This ain't got to do nothing with my mom, nigga. And when you brought that up, it's because people like your mom who live in Cleveland, they should never walk outside without getting shot, right? My mom was going to walk the street anyway. He ain't got nothing to do with my mom. Do you agree that people should be able to, no matter how old they are, walk outside without getting shot? Where is you going with it? This uh, I sustain the objection. Curious okay. to uh, disregard the last, the last question and any answer. Now, Mr. White, they did give you a photographic lineup, told you to circle and initial it, and you responded again, y'all got to throw me something, man, right? Wait, I never signed nothing. You, you want to be wait, like what you you bought this film like you trying you can't get a conviction out of me man I can't help you. This is right. This don't have nothing to do with me. I'm gonna keep telling you. 
I was just worried to go to prison, do my time, rest of my three years, and go home. Mr. White, after I ask you some questions, maybe some defense counsel asks you questions, you realize you're getting to go back to prison, right? When? When you get done, when I get done asking you questions, and if any other defense counsel gets to ask you questions, we'll be through. You understand that, right? It's been two days worth asking me a question. I keep telling you, I don't know, I don't know. This don't have nothing to do with me. This is not my case. Mr. White, you realize that if you... I can hear you all chat, so please uh, don't talk. Mr. White, do you want to get this process done with quickly or slowly? I'm asking you. Listen, however you want to take it, however you want to go about it. 36 months? I'm going to be there, and I'm going to make it home. You can't stop me from going home. Hey, Mr. White, like I, asked, like I talked about with you, you talked about what you're going to do when you get out, right, when you do get home, because that day's coming, right? Get me a job, and work, 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 work. So nobody's trying to keep you from going home, right? Who's trying to keep me? Nobody can keep me from going home. That's what I'm saying. That's true, right? No one's trying to keep you going. My case is over. I don't need Paul to be here. Like, right now, I'm ready to go right now. Now, after you ask for the $20, the Texas Gator proceeds to cut you out for asking money, he would like to for your friend, too. You remember that? For one, Pooh is not my friend. I don't even know him. What the fuck is $20 going to do for me? For one, I don't even like the police. Two, why would I be telling y'all anything? about something that don't have nothing to do with me. I keep telling you, whenever happened at that gas station, when a shot fired, I ran. Because I had a fire on, I was on first from the first station. I got out of there, my sister came and got me. I was at home. Where you at? After shooting, did you go to your aunt's in Lakewood or your mom on Cleveland? My mom house. On Cleveland? Same yeah, thing, Cleveland, no. I stand the objection. On the night of the shooting, when your friend got... When someone you know got shot in the head, where did you go after the shooting, Mr. White? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. All ruled. You can answer this, White. Man, I wasn't even there. Where did you go, though, after? It's like you not understanding nothing I'm telling you. Mr. White, where did you go after your sister picked you up? Home. Cleveland Avenue. I went home. I went home. I wasn't. So all you keep telling about something, I made a right on Harper. I don't even got life. I wasn't even with them. Whoever you keep telling about. And Mr. White, Detective Gaither, she says she appreciate it, but don't try, don't try her on some fuck shit to pay you to pick somebody out. And you just remain silent to that comment, right? Who is Gaither? I don't even know nobody by no name, Gaither. And after a little bit of silence, you pointed directions to where to go to the shooting location, right? No. I can't help you. You keep... I, these don't have nothing to do with me. Why would I be pointing you something that don't have nothing to do with me? I wasn't involved in. Mr. White, did you know that you were being recorded on a phone call and when you are in the car talking to the detective in 2015? I probably wouldn't cost where you can't be talking about me. Then I already told you I didn't even have my phone. Mrs. White, Detective Gaker tells you that y'all know exactly who did it. She doesn't mind helping you out. Do you have an objection, sir? Yeah. I sustain the objection. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to probably take a comfort break. What do you think? Five minutes? Okay. All right. We're going to be in recess for five minutes. All right. All rise.
take your seats, please. Uh, sorry, Nathan, do I have everybody, sir? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam question. No, it's not. You know, no, it's not. And you know why? Look to your left. <laughs> Mr. Stillwell, is that fine, sir? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Summon our jurors, please, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, you may continue, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Ms. White, Detective Gaither told you don't play it the way you're playing. And you told her, to ask her, you saying, well, help me out, man. You, you, that's what you said, Detective Gaither, right? Ms. White? I didn't even talk to no Gaither. And this way, you eventually directed the detective to the intersection of Browns Mill Road and Harper Road, right? How did I do that if I ain't meet me nobody? And the reason that you took them to that intersection was because that was where the car you were riding in was at when the who was shot, right? If that's what you want to say. And while you're in the car with this way, you use as a reference point two people who are outside and you say, you see those two people standing? They was right there. We stopped at the stop sign. They came from all the way down this long-ass street where there's no stop sign at all and they shot right here. Boom, boom, boom. That's what you said, right? I don't even know who you're talking about. And this White, you told the detectives that you all stopped at a stop sign. The shooters were coming a long way down Browns Mill Road. What shooters? What are you talking about? In the white Dodge Nitro that you talked about with the two detectives, right? I was gone. And Mr. White, Detective Dennis asked you if they cut you all off and if they knew where you all were from, you told them yes, that they cut you off, right? Who cut me off? The white Dodge Nitro to the blue Ford Escape that you Right? You might be crazy or something. And Detective Gaither asked you again if you're going to do the right thing, and you say yes, right? Left. And by doing the right thing, she means telling them who was involved with who being shot, right? This don't have nothing to do with me. Why would I be telling anybody anything? Do I look like I'm the police? Ms. White, I'm asking you questions. I'm just asking you 
your answer. All right? So, Mr. White, you ask again if she's still going to throw you something in there. She says, I can't do it like that. And you say, I am talking about that. That's what you said, right? I don't know what you're talking about. And the detective say, you have to just circle the person who you saw that night that pulled out the gun. Circle it and sign it. And, and you ask, sign my name, right? So who signed my name? You, one of them signed my name? Mr. White, I can't testify. You understand you're testifying. Right? I'm not testifying either. This ain't got <laughs> shit to do with me, bro. I keep telling you that, bro. I'm dead for real. And Mr. White, the detective tell you to put your name or initials, and you ask, why do you have to sign my name? I'll circle it, but I won't initial nothing, right? How much you getting paid for this? And Mr. White, you go on to say that that's just like you're circling this. Y'all take the paperwork, boom, go back to the discovery packet. And I said it, right? That's what you said to me. And they asked you to sign that show back to the client, right? You line, they line. I ain't got nothing to do with it. And Detective Baker asked you if you know what unit she works in. And you asked her what department. You remember saying that, Mr. White? Only department I'm trying to go back to is correct down the road. If you, if you understand what I'm telling you, Mrs. White, she tells you she's in the game unit, and they ask you. You remember them telling you that they should have taken a picture of your homeboy who, and you and you respond took a picture of whose homeboy. You remember that, Mr. White? <coughs> That's not my homeboy. I don't even know who the fuck is you talking about. And the text Dennis tells you he's talking about showing you a picture of Pooh, who was in the car when he was shot, right? So what all this got to do with me? What the game you and all they got to do with me? Did I tell you I was in the game? Are you in the game with me in the game, Mr. Martin? No. Did you ever have any friends or people you go out to war again? No. Do you have any knowledge about any games in Iran? No. Is there gangs that exist in prison? Of course. You know that. Everybody know that. The world know that. And do people who are in prison, do they uh, ever keep up with cases and stuff that happens in the courtroom? I'm not in the gang, so I don't know. So you don't have to let them refer to me. Even people who aren't in gangs in prison. Is there ways for them to find out what happens in court? I'll be minding my business. Have you ever heard the saying, keep your eyes on your own paper? And so I don't really be standing with no nigga got going on down the road. Yeah. And that analogy you used about not looking at, looking at your own paper is basically a way of saying that you can't testify against anyone else. Is that what you're saying? What? You don't want to tell on anyone else, snitch on anyone else, anything like that, right? For what? 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 I ain't did nothing. I ain't got no case. And you need to begin the, the dudes who was in the car, the dude who got shot in the head, you feel me? Because you got the wrong person. Mr. I'm not ready to go, man, you feel me? Mr. White? I'm just telling y'all what's going on now. I'm ready to go. Right. I don't have that many more questions. And I ain't got that many answers. And the same answer I'm gonna keep telling you, man. I don't got shit to do with this. I ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back to prison. So I can go home. Mr. White, they tell you that Pooh's in a rehab, waiting to get his skull healed, and you respond, he was still talking enough. Right? Those are your words. How would I know that I'm in prison? What the fuck? It surprised you, and they told you that, and you responded like that, because it's surprising that someone's still talking after getting half of their skull taken off, right? It would be surprising to you if somebody got shot in the head and had this skull, they still talk to it. It would be surprising to you, man. I agree with you, Mr. White, because it's true, right? I don't know. What are you talking about? And Mr. White, is it fair to say that Pooh was lucky to be alive today? 
How would I know I'm in prison? Who he wasn't driving the car that night, was he? How would I know if I got picked up by my sister? Who didn't do anything to who you said was involved in the shooting, did he? How do we know? I don't know who. What did Pooh do to get shot in the head? You never told who didn't do anything to justify getting shot in the head. I don't think there is some, did he? How do I know? You know more than me. And they asked you how cool you were with Pooh, and you told him he's your partner, your real partner, your Lakewood partner. You're a goddamn lie. I ain't tell that man my nigga my partner, man. And they asked you how long you know him, and you said three to four years, right? Are you putting words in my mind, bro? And that scared me. That scared me. Did it, the dude right here lying, man. If I keep telling you I met the man one day, how the hell you give him? I know him for three, four years, man. Mr. White. This shit ain't even adding up. This shit, this shit put together like goddamn Legos or something. What you got going on, man? Mr. White. In the car, when they start showing you the photographic lineup, you say there's only. Only person in the head that you've seen is a person named DK. It's the only one you, you uh, saw that says DK, right? Those were your words when you were looking through the photo line, right? I don't know who that is. I don't know how I know DK because you keep saying DK and Walter Murphy is the same person. And you saying this, not me. Mr. White, they, the second line that they show you, when you're flipping through it, you say, you recognize the picture of Coach Ben. He's the one with the money. Photo fucks with. That's what you said, right? You said that. You trying to put emphasis on shit. You can't put nothing in my mouth. Hey, man. I'm not ready to go, man. Mr. I'm just White. being real. I'm just being real, man, because this ain't got nothing to do with me. <coughs> this is what? What you tell the Texas is OG Bentley thought you were fixing to rob or something by how you all were driving, right? I don't even know who that is. And you tell the Texas Dennis that OG Bentley's Instagram is OG Bentley, right? How would I know that if I don't even know who to do it is? And you keep expressing to the Texas that you're worried about your name being in paperwork, right? Why would my name be in anybody's paperwork? They make it make sense if this is not my case. And what my co defendant is down the road with me. He got the same sentence I got. We both peeled out to the same thing. So my name ain't in no paperwork. You feel me? And Mr. White, you, you tell them that what you're saying is if they write your name on the shit, damn, somebody gets locked up under that shit. What if someone comes to my mom's house getting shot? Those were your words, right? When did I tell you this? This is what you told the detective. When did I tell the detective? Sorry, stop, 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 stop. Objection? Yes, future dangerous. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection, but let's move on. Yes, Your Honor. When did I tell you that somebody's going to pull up at my mom's house? This is what you told the detectives when y'all were in the car on 2015. I stand the objection. Let's move on from that, Mr. Uh, Atkins. Yes, Your Honor. My mom ain't got nothing to do with it. Keep my mom out there, man. Now, while in the car, Mr. White, after looking at the lineup, you were explaining to them using cars that were coming by the roadway and showed them how this happened. No, I know what you're talking about. I don't recall shit. And you pointed out to the Texas Gator and Dennis, see this truck coming up, right? You're right behind him. But how your partner drives, he drives fast. He's young. Maybe he's 20, right? I don't know what you're talking about, man. Because this is why what you're saying is people who are young. All this, what fast. you're saying, is made up. She so went. all this happened because you were in a car that's. Who was shot because he was tailgating the car? That's what you're trying to tell the detectives, right? First you said, I keep telling you, I ain't met them poop one time. This is the first time I've seen in my life. Then you just said, three, four years. This man, I ain't know this man no three, four years. Mr. White, after you showed them the direction the shooters were traveling in, they asked you which way did they keep going. You said, they're from Cleveland. So they went this way, right? 
No. And you knew where they were from and what direction they were headed because you were from Cleveland, right? How did I know that if I was going from the scene? And the reason you were able to tell them about who she came from the walks of Murphy is because you knew them growing up in Cleveland Avenue, right? You must have paid one of them dudes in the car to cooperate with you and tell you shit about me, cuz. I don't know what you got going on, but I was going from the scene. How much you paying them? And Mr. White, what he told him is they went all the way around the golf course, came back up through that way, and shot twice, right? I ain't told you nothing like that. And what he told the detectives was, we heard the first shot, me and my other three partners, shot the first time, boom. He ducked, he came through the window, and hit him through the head. That's what he told the detectives about what happened that night, right? I ain't told you nothing like that. Because it was five of y'all in the car, right? Why you keep trying to place me in the car? Mr. White, you were in the car that night, right? No. Detective Dennis asked you if you know where the shooters are at, and you say they be on fleet. Like, you know, Mount Zion, all the apartments down there, right? No. Do you know where the Mount Zion apartments are in Cleveland Avenue? No. And you say they mostly be at Empire Park shooting dice. Do you know where Empire Park is, Mr. White? I ain't even, I don't even know Empire. I heard Cleveland Avenue Park. I don't know about no Empire Park. What is, does anyone ever call it Empire Park or is that a different park? What is it? I'm asking you. You tell me. You said Empire Park. I ain't never heard where Empire Park is. And the detectives got frustrated with you for wasting their time and they say, maybe I'll make a t shirt of who died. And they said, VIP proof. And you responded, GIP, right? You remember saying that? That sounds like gang shit. I'm not in the game. What does GIP mean? I don't know. You tell me. Later on, the detectives ask you what GIP means, and you say it's not a game. GIP stands for get all profit. You don't want nothing but money, right? That's what you told us? <laughs> I ain't talking about nothing like that. I see you want some money. Real, real bad. But you ain't gonna get it off me. One brief moment, Your Honor. Hold on, Mr. White. One second. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. White. No further questions from the state. Cross. Anyone? All right.
You discussed several times that um, you're a convicted felon. I'd like to show you, with the court's permission, um, Mr. Williams, April 10, 2024, exhibit number 215. Your Honor, it will be 216, 217, 218, and 219. May I approach, sir? You may, sir. Approach you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm showing you, and they're, they're individual. And I know you're handcuffed, so I'm not trying to make you flip them, but I'm going to show you. With the, may I flip them? No. You may. This is um, what I'm reading, Mr. Williams, number 215. Okay. Who's Mr. Williams? Um, you know, performer known as uh, Young Tuck? Oh, yeah. This is just the exhibit number. This is the. You have to speak up, Mr. Steele. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. This is the document I'm showing you, and it's Mr. Williams number 215, okay? And do you see here, it's in the uh, Superior Court, Clayton County. Remember discussing Clayton County? Yes, sir. And remember, this is State of Georgia versus you, right, Mr. White? Yes, sir. True. And do you recognize um, these charges, theft by receiving stolen property? Under the First Offender Act, you remember that? Yes, sir. And you received uh, five years. Remember? Yes, sir. And then that was on probation, but that probation was revoked. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And then at the back of this, the last page, Your Honor, of this exhibit is the revocation for your violation, so you're no longer first offender. True? Yes, sir. And this is certified. These are all certified copies, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, I move for the admission of Mr. Williams, number 215. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Williams, 215 is admitted. Then we're looking at Mr. Williams number 216. It's just at the bottom, same thing, the exhibit. Okay? Yes? Yes, sir. You have to answer for the court report and the jury. Yes, sir. And then up here, you see where it says Fulton County Superior Court? Do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. And then I'm turning the page. You see this indictment? State of Georgia in Fulton County, case number 16SC, 1458-06. You see that? Yes, sir. And then you see it says State of Georgia versus you, Mr. White, right? Yes, sir. And then it gives um, all the charges in the indictment, multiple counts of entering auto, theft by receiving stolen property, willful obstruction of an officer and criminal trespass. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And then over here it says that... You pled uh, guilty on September 21, 2018, 16. 16. Thank you. I'm not wearing my glass. Thank you very much. Okay. And then you received five years to serve one year in prison. You see that? Yes, sir. All right. Your Honor, this is also a certified copy. I move for the admission. Any objection uh, to uh, Jeffrey Williams, 216? Your Honor, the state does not object. Okay, all right. Uh, 216 uh, is, uh, Jeff Williams 216 is admitted. This one is also 
Another exhibit sticker, it says Mr. Williams number 217. You see that, sir? Yes, sir. And this, again, is the front page, Fulton County Superior Court clerk, official document. You see where that says that document certification? Yes, sir. And if I'm going too fast, just say I'm going too fast. And this is an indictment, and it's indictment number 17SC156271. You see that? Yes, sir. And this is the state of Georgia versus you. You see that? Yes, sir. Hold on one second. Your Honor, I am withdrawing, actually, number 217. I apologize. Okay. 218. You see that one? Yes, sir. Okay. And this, again, is the official clerk of Fulton County, correct? See that? Fulton County. Yes, sir. And this is, again, electronic document certification by the clerk of Fulton County Superior Court. Correct? Yes, sir. And this is indictment number 17SC156307. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And then this one, and I made a mistake before, I apologize, is indictment number 17SC156307, State of Georgia versus two people, a Mr. Elliott as well as you. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And this one has you charged um, in counts 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, and 11. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And count 1 is hijacking a motor vehicle, right? Yes, sir. And count 3 is armed robbery, correct? Yes, sir. And count 4 is armed robbery, correct? Yes, sir. And count 6 is aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Yes, sir. Count seven is aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Yes, sir. Count nine, possession of firearm during commission of a felony. Yes, sir. And count 11, possession of firearm by convicted felon. Yes, sir. And then that is you. And then here is uh, your sentencing sheet. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And you played guilty to these crimes under Alford, A-L-F-O-R-D. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And here you got 10 years to serve in prison. On yes, sir. Count, I apologize. On count one, hijacking motor vehicle. Count three, armed robbery. Count four, armed robbery. Yes, sir. And then count nine, five years to serve consecutive, meaning it's now a 15-year sentence, right? Yes, sir. And that's on possession of firearm during commission of crime. And on count 11, possession of firearm by a convicted felon, five years to serve concurrent with count one. So it runs together, not consecutive. Fair to say? Yes, sir. So that's a 15 to do 10 year sentence in prison. And you're serving that sentence now. Yes, sir, I am. And you mentioned to the jury that you have approximately 36 months left. Yes, sir. And you're serving that to the door, it's called. Every bit. And your familiar armed robbery carries a penalty of 10 years in prison up to 20 years or life. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And, um, the, that is no parole, right? You do every day. That's why you every day, saying. day for day. Okay. This is uh, Mr. Williams. Oh, I apologize, Your Honor. I move for the admission of Mr. Williams, number two one eight. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Williams, two one eight is admitted. This is Mr. Williams, number two one nine. You see that? Yes, sir. And this again is the electronic document certification of the clerk of Fulton County Superior Court, right? Yes, sir. And this is case number 18CR1519. Is that true? Yes, sir. And this one is again in DeKalb County. If I said Fulton, I may have said this is DeKalb County, correct? No, uh, that's wrong. No, I've never been incarcerated in DeKalb County. Um. Okay. Is this your name, D'Angelo Demon White? My name is D'Angelo White, but Demond is not my middle name. That's fine. If you're saying it's not you, let me just see if there's a... <clears throat> is this your signature or your handwriting? No, it's not me at all. That's fine. That's fine. And I, I know I've asked you twice. That's not your signature. No, sir. Your Honor, I'll be removing or withdrawing, rather, 219. All right, sir. Okay. So... Yeah, we'll need those. Yeah. Yep. 
Now, the prosecutor has said to you, um, has called you a victim. Did you hear that, that term? Yes, sir. And you said that you're not a victim because you weren't shot. You remember something like that? Yes, sir. And accurate, to be accurate, on April 12th of 2000. And 15. Do you remember that's the date that the prosecutor was asking you about? Do you remember that date at all? No, sir. Okay. At that time, you were with four other people in a car. <clears throat> True? No, sir. All right. And at that time, you were doing what you and your friends do. You were looking. You had guns in the car, right? You said that earlier. I went in no car with no gun. Okay. And you were doing what you do. You were trying to find somebody with money or a nice car, or a car, and I'll rob them. Objection, Is that true? Basis. It's improper character. I sustain the objection. Right, that's what was going on. I sustain the objection. Just rephrase it. Okay. Do you remember following a car with a person who you believe in that car was wealthy? You remember saying that? I wasn't following nobody. Do you remember being in a car that was following another car that you believe in the car that was being followed, so the front car, had a gentleman named O.G. Bentley, or Bentley. Do you remember that? I don't even know who O.G. Bentley is. Remember telling the detectives that the car that you were in was following closely another car, and that car had O.G. Bentley in the car. Do you remember that? Um, state again, I don't know who O.G. Bentley is. Okay. Do you remember explaining that you believe O.G. Bentley is wealthy because he had worked for a very um, well-known and um, accomplished artist, Young Thug. You remember saying something like that? No, sir. How would I know he wealthy if I don't even know him? Did you know that in two th April 12, 2015, did you know Young Thug, the rapper, to be um, extremely popular? Of course, everybody do. And did you know at that time, if you can lock in 2015 April, that Young Thug was in the in the midst of a approximately 20 state tour objection with Travis on. Scott? Basis. Assumes facts, not evidence. I'm asking I sustain the question. Objection. Did you know that Jeffrey Williams was on tour in April 2000 and 2015? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. I don't know, sir, but oh, I know he oh, be. Oh, oh. Stop, stop. When there's objection, Mr. White, just let me finish. We're on the objection now. I'll let you know if you can answer it, okay? Yes, sir. All right, okay. Well, well, since that's not evidence, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to rule the objection. Let me just see where this goes. Were you aware that Jeffrey Williams was touring throughout the United States, the southern part of the United States, in April 2015? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. Two on the southern part of the United States, assuming facts not evidence. I'm asking the question. I'm going to overrule the objection. You can answer the question. Did you know he was touring? I mean, I don't know his tour date, but I mean, I know he's a celebrity, so he probably was touring. Do you know whether at that time, if you could, if you remember, if you don't remember, just say, I don't know, that Jeffrey Williams at that time, or a young thug at that time, was touring with another artist known as Travis Scott? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation based on the witness's previous answer. I'm going to overrule the objection. You can answer it. I think so. Okay. I don't know what city they were in. Or... That's fine. Now, you never told detective and, and whomever the detectives are or anybody that Jeffrey Williams was in any way involved in this April 12th, 2015 incident. Is that true? I never absolutely told nothing like that. You never saw Jeffrey Williams on or around April 12, 2015 during this incident that you're talking about when you called your sister, correct? And when never. I say Jeffrey Williams, that's what I... I'm not, up, okay? I know what you're talking about. All right. I connected it for you? Yes, sir. Okay. You never said that to anybody, right? I never, ever said that. Have you seen the video footage from the Cisco, Cisco gas station... Doesn't have Jeffrey Williams there, correct? I seen the footage, but he was not there. Right. This had nothing to do with Jeffrey Williams, correct? Correct. Now, you're in a car, if you were in a car, if you were in a car, I'm talking about that same night, 
following people and you told it to, you told somebody that yeah <clears throat> OG Bentley probably thought we were going to arm rob remember saying something like that I don't even know OG Bentley okay. you remember MG saying that oh. your car was driving not you driving but the car was driving very close and fast behind the the car that it was following do you remember saying something like that and if you don't I don't all right do you remember then a car pulling into the Sitco gas station we talked about after the car with OG Bentley in it. Do you remember that? No, sir. Can you tell the jurors why, if you know, on that video you saw, why the car that was following the other car pulled into the Sitco gas station if it didn't get gas? I mean, I can't recall, sir. That's fine. And in that car, you knew that people got out of the car that was being followed and wouldn't come out of the of the um, convenience store. Do you remember telling the detectives that? I never told them that. And then a young lady was talking with a person who you may have known, and there was no yelling or anything. Do you remember telling that? No, sir. All right. And when there were guns in the car that you're in, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen jury why there were guns in that car? I wasn't even in the car with no guns. Then, I had my own weapon, so I wasn't in no car. <laughs> gun. I was standing outside the store. Then at the Cisco gas station, other people came up in another car, and they displayed guns. Do you remember that? No, sir. Do you remember a man who you're referring to as DK, or the state referred to him DK or Walter Murphy, came up with a long gun, came up to the car. Do you remember that? I don't know how I know how Walter Murphy and DK is the same person because he mentioned it to me. And then um, DK didn't shoot anybody in that parking lot. No one got shot in the parking lot, true? No one got shot in that parking lot. And then the two cars drove away in different directions. Or the same direction, but different streets. You remember that? I can't recall. Do you remember the car that you were in, not driving, but then came and drove at the car where um, Mr. Murphy or DK was in? and other people. Do you remember that? I wasn't there, sir, because shot with fire, like, when, when they left me, I had, I had ran. And then people, um, both cars are being armed, and then, God forbid, Mr. Montgomery was shot in the head. True? I don't know Mr. Montgomery. I just seen him one time. All right. Now, you discuss at times, and I know you don't know the person, but you knew that Bentley or OG Bentley um, was somehow either related to or did um, lawful um, touring business, music business with Jeffrey Williams. Is that true? I don't even know who OG Bentley is. You told the detectives that you assumed that OG Bentley or Bentley had money only because he was somehow connected with the wildly popular and wealthy artist, Jeffrey Williams. I never told him that. Remember thinking that, though? Saying that you thought he had money? No, sir. He was connected with Young Thug? No, sir. And I wasn't saying that's a bad thing. You're saying through the music, right? I don't even know him, period. All right. Um, Your Honor, may I have one second? Sure. Coach you may. Any other examination on behalf of any other counsel? All right, any redirect from the state? Briefly, Your Honor. Mr. White, you didn't cuss one time. You need to speak with Mr. Shield, did you? 
No. Your demeanor is a lot calmer now. And you're not so bright. Because stuff you were saying, it it didn't add up. You saying, I know a dude, three, four years, and all that. I don't. When you and me spoke with Mr. White, you never answered. You, you answered every question, Mr. Steele, yes, sir, no, sir, right? Yes, sir. And that yes, sir, that you just said now was the first time you answered one of my questions like that. Is that fair to say? Because you, you were asking something you feel me but whatever you were saying the first time you you was off the wall charts saying stuff that i never had never said trying to make me remember somebody or i was there no further questions why thank you sir anything further councils from the defense all right hearing none um Mr. Atkins, may we permanently or temporarily excuse Mr. White? Permanently, Your Honor. All right. Mr. White, I'm going to permanently excuse you as a witness. Um, thank you for your patience with us, and uh, just uh, give us a second. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take lunch, and uh, I'd like to have you all back for 1.30, for, and we'll start back up at that point in time with the, with the state's case, okay? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, all rise. All right, our jury has left us. Um, Sergeant Ingram, if you could, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I'm sorry. You can remove Mr. White, please. All right, councils, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, recess for lunch. Before we do that, Mr. Steele and Mr. Adams, can I see you and along with Ms. Love, please? Thank you. All right, we're in recess.
All right, Sergeant Ingram, do we have everybody, sir? Yes, sir. Everybody's present. Okay. What about our jurors? All the jurors are here. Okay. All right. Uh, Councilors for the state, your next witness in uh, pocket. I know he's in the building. I believe he's outside. Y'all are really great at not answering my questions, but <laughs> you don't know whether or not he's outside or what? You can check if you want. Okay. All right. Your, your Honor, may I address an issue? May I address an issue with the court before the witness comes out before the jury is brought out? Sure. You're not going to do that now, Your Honor. If you must, go ahead. I must. I go must. ahead. So, Your Honor, I, I just learned of this because I'd been inadvertently left off of a lot of email correspondence from the state this week. But um, when Your Honor was on the bench last week and discussed the five rules for streamlining the case, uh, you stated that the, the parties, since we're at the case in chief for the state, are to present to us the Friday, every other Friday, the list of witnesses and the exhibits that those witnesses would be testifying, uh, or would, would be used with those witnesses. And I believe that Mr. Murphy is next, and we did not receive last week the list of exhibits that would be used with Mr. Murphy. In fact, I personally you didn't or no, we, I believe I can say we, um, did not. Um, I did not. And I do not believe any of the other defendants received the list of exhibits for Mr. Murphy last week. Um, I just learned that there was some email correspondence this week that included exhibits for Mr. Murphy. And I just received for the first time um, the exhibits that are gonna be used with Mr. Murphy. But regardless of my being left off of the email chain, I do not believe any of us received these exhibits last week as ordered by the court from the bench. And I do not see how we are going to streamline and move this case along if your efforts to do that are not being followed. And, and assuming I am correct, and I think I am, I just have to say that this is just part of the continuing pattern of discovery abuse in this case. And I do not believe that this should be trial by ambush, Your Honor. Okay, what specifically did you get, Mr. Weinstein? I did, I did not get what the court ordered, which is a list of exhibits that are to be associated with the presentation of Mr. Murphy's testimony. Okay. Now, well, you, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Um, if, if you received that last week and I was simply left off of last week's chain, perhaps that happened, but I've tried to check with co-defendants counsel whether they received I mean, I could be an error, but whether they received this. Did you talk to Ms. Hilton or Ms. Uh, Love about that? I just learned about this, Your Honor. I just learned about it. Did I you did talk that. with them before I came out to discuss them once you learned about this? I asked them to please include me on the emails that I did not sir, receive my, this week. Sir, just answer my question. Yeah, tell me your specific question. Your, my specific question is, did you talk with Ms. Love or Ms. Hilton about these particular exhibits? No. Okay. That's the first point of contact. So why don't you do that right now? And maybe they'll be able to tell you, hey, we sent it out in the state or it's an oversight. Then I can take it up. Okay? Okay. So why, have don't a you moment? Do, why don't you do that right Thank now? Thank you. Is that, was that on Tuesday, um, Ms. Hilton? So, Your Honor, um, briefly, on last week, uh, Ms. 
Love says, Love says out. That was on count. Monday the 8th of, um, of um, April. Correct. So on Monday. I, I do see that, Mr. Weinstein. And that was sent out. And there's an exhibit list. And, Your Honor, on Monday, that exhibit list, while it did not have the actual pictures, it has a link to where all the pictures were in the reorganized discovery so they can know exactly which pictures we were referencing. And I believe in that email. No, I don't think it was in that email. At some later communication, I myself told defense counsel that I would send a PowerPoint as soon as the PowerPoint was ready with all of the exhibits, but they did have the links um, to where all of the exhibits were. Last week, Your Honor, Miss Love, when she sent out the PowerPoint with the exhibits for Mr. Um, for Dexter Montgomery to include the pictures with Mr. White, some of those pictures that did not get in, given Mr. White's testimony, the state is going to try to get in through Mr. Murphy. So we just added them to the Mr. Murphy list of um, exhibits. But the majority of these exhibits that we sent on Monday are on here. The state did update this witness list multiple times this week. And every time we updated it, I sent, a, I sent the updated copy and I highlighted what were the additional. I see another email on the 9th of April. Correct. I said same correspondence. I see a further email on the 10th in respect to that, those same exhibits. And I did not realize Mr. Weinstein was not on this on this list until Ms. Um, D. Williams, literally, I think a few minutes before we were about to come into court, advised that um, Mr. Weinstein, Ms. Afton, Mr. Ms. Hingerty were not on that email chain. I told her that we would make sure that's corrected moving forward. But what the state did try to do, Your Honor, in all candor, is as the state is continuing to work up questions, more pictures may come to the thought, but these are all pictures, all evidence that have been turned over in discovery. And that's why I provided a specific link where they can be found. So it's no surprise that of where they're coming from, but this isn't any new discovery, Your Honor. These are all things that have been served. And what the state has tried to do is as I've been continuing prepping my questions and updating any type of evidence is providing that exhibit. All right. And we appreciate the update, Your Honor, but whether they came in Monday, Tuesday, or this morning, neither of those days are last week, which is what this court ordered from the bench. All right. Well, I'm noting your objection, Mr. Weinstein. I'm going to include the next, those three exhibit, those three emails from the state, Ms. Weaver's the next court's exhibits in order, and I'll deny your motion. Call for our jury, please. <laughs> but Mr. Weinstein has been updated on, and any other counsel have been updated accordingly. Make sure that the next set of emails. Let's do that and not make make sure that doesn't occur again. Uh, and I believe Ms. Hingerty was on that email, but I can say. All right. Ms. Hingerty was on that Sir? Mr. Botts is not present. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Who was responsible for keeping an eye on him? Was that you, Mr. Harvey? Come on. I don't ask for much, okay? Really? <laughs> there are Apple devices you can kind of help them out with that. So. Yes, summon our jurors, please, sir.
All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right. The state prepared to call your next witness? Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right, summon Mr. Walter Murphy, please. Mr. Murphy, good afternoon, sir. Sir, if you to please approach the witness stand. Once you get there, if you'd be so kind to turn and face Sergeant Ingram, be sworn as a witness, please, sir. Uh, Walter Murphy, uh, W A L T E R M U R P H Y. And good afternoon, Mr. Murphy. What's up? Um, how old are you? I'm 32. And when were you born? I was 9th, 1901. And where are you from? Georgia. Where in Georgia? Forest Park, <laughs> Jonesboro. Road. <clears throat> Is that within the city of Atlanta? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Murphy, do me a favor. Can you pull yourself a little closer to the microphone, speak directly into it, so we can all hear you, sir? Appreciate it. When you were younger, did you grow up off of Jonesboro Road? Yeah. Did you live in a particular apartment complex? Or where did you live? Did you live in a house or apartment complex? Projects. Okay. <clears throat> and where were those projects located? John the Road. What were the name of this project? Gilwood Gardens. You said Gilwood? Gilbert, Gilbert. Gardens. And about how long did you live at Gilbert Gardens? Bless you. Uh, since I can't remember, I was about to 2005. Since I have old, I was then. And if you were born in 1991, would it say you were 14 in 2005? If, if the math, math, and then that's it. Okay. <clears throat> when you lived in Gilbert Gardens <clears throat> up until 2005, who did you live with? My mom and my siblings. How many siblings do you have? Uh, four. And within your line of siblings, where do you fall? Are you the oldest, the youngest, or in the middle? I'm the oldest son, second youngest kid. <clears throat> in 2005, when you moved from, uh, me. when you stopped living at Gilbert Gardens, where did you move to? Uh, after Gilbert Gardens, we moved to off of uh, Browns Mill Road and Cleveland Avenue. Were you in a house, apartment, or something else? House. And how long did you live off of that house off of Browns Mill Road and Cleveland Avenue? Um, we stayed in, I think we stayed in like three houses in the same neighborhood. Kept being put out. <clears throat> and when you moved to those homes from Gilbert Gardens to those three houses off of Browns Mill and Cleveland, did you move with your mom and your three other siblings? Your other siblings? Yeah. Where did you go to school when you were younger? Um, I don't remember the name. Is, oh, Minnie is how? Say that again? Minnie is how? Elementary? Minnie? Yeah, Mini. Uh, N -N -I -E? Yeah, Mini. That's how. Okay. Did you stay in middle in <clears throat> elementary school until fifth grade? Yeah, and then I went to Crawford Long. Okay. And how long did you stay at Crawford Long? To, uh, was that until the eighth grade? Mm -mm, six, and then I went to alternative school. What alternative school did you go to? CEP. And did you ever attend high school? No.
Have you gotten your GED? Yeah. When did you obtain it? In prison. Do you remember roughly around what years? I can't remember what year. Okay. Do you remember what year you went to prison? At the end of 14, beginning of 15, something like that. Anything that's when you went to prison or when you went to jail, 2014 and 2015? I know I was locked up a lot of those years around that time, back and forth, a lot, like a whole lot. Now, you said that you did not complete high school. Have you ever worked prior to, let me ask you, do you work now? Yeah. Okay, prior to you working now, when you were younger, so between that 2005 and 2012 <clears throat> or 13, um, did you ever work? Yeah. What type of work did you do? I worked at Turner Field. What did you do at Turner Field? I worked at concession stand. If we we'll use 2005 as a landmark, which you said you were 14 years old, about what years did you work at Turner Field I'm in the concession, at the concession stand? I don't know, I ain't really good with years, but I know I was in alternative school when I worked. It was summertime. Outside of working at the concession stand at Turner Field, did you have any other jobs while you were younger? No. Nah. Are you married? What you mean, on paper? <laughs> um, yeah, on paper, are you married? No. Do you have a significant other? Yes. How long have you all been together? No, we've been a long time. <laughs> Probably about, <clears throat> at least about 11, 10 years, something like that. 10, 11 years. Do you have children? Yeah, four. And do you have boys and girls, all boys, all girls? Two girls, two boys. And what's the age range of your children? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? Old. What's the age range of your children? Sure. What is the age range of your children? 16, 15, 8. And then I got a four month old baby boy. And are you currently working? Yes. What type of work do you do? Uh, I'm manufacturing windows and doors at a company. How long have you been uh, working for this company, manufacturing doors? I can't remember the years, man. I'm. I'm Terrible years, but... So, we're in 2024. I started in the halfway house. Whenever I went to the halfway house, that's when I got the job I'm at now. And since you said that you aren't the best with math, I like timelines. So, you mind if I come up here? We're going to do some timelines. You said you were born in 1991. Sir? Yeah. Okay. And that from between 1991 to 2005, you lived off of Cleveland and O'Hakeville. Brownsville. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And Brown. Thank you for correcting me. Now, you think you may have went to prison, you believe sometime in 2014 or 2015? Is 
to 2005, we believe you're about 14 years old. Okay. Give or take between 1991. Mm -hmm. Me too, man. <laughs> Most lawyers are. All right. And we'll start. We'll keep it right here for right now. And you, I'm sorry, one more thing. You said that you were working at your current job since you got put in the halfway house, correct? Yeah, the only time I'm working when I went back to prison for this. Okay, so then let's or talk. jail, about, whatever. When did you remember going back to jail for this incident? Oh, yeah, I locked me up. Was that in 2022? I turned myself in June. Whatever, yeah. 2022? I think that would be it. And do you remember before you got locked up for this case, were you in the halfway house? I was free. I was, I was... So you weren't in the halfway house? No. Okay. Do you remember when did you get out of prison? What year was it? When I went to the halfway house? Yes. I don't know. It was COVID, though. It Everything was, COVID. was shut down for COVID. So we can say around 2020? Do you remember COVID being in 2020? I don't know. I was in prison. Okay. If I say it was in 2020, would you agree with me? I don't know. I can't agree with you if I went here. Okay. But it was the ground COVID. All right. <clears throat> And you started working at the job during this time when you were at the halfway house. Yeah. And did your job, did your company allow you to return back to your job once you got released from jail for this case? No. No. Did you get a, did you start working somewhere else? No. Okay. So I thought you said that you were still working at the same company that you were working back when you I were... am. Okay. They didn't let me come back at first. But they eventually have let you come back. Yeah. All right. And when did you start working back at the manufacturing firm? I don't know, man. Okay. Can let me ask a better question? How long have you been working there since you had since you could return? Has it been a month, five months, a year? How long have you been working back at the manufacturing firm? Um, it's been a year. Because I started back in March and this April, so it's been a year. So I started about last March, yeah. All right. Thank. Was it before your four month old was born? I said last March. Yeah, so it was before your four month old was born? It was last March of 2023. Yeah, he was born. Four months ago. In December. Okay. Yeah. And are you enjoying the work that you do? I mean, or it's work. It yeah, it's just work. It's work. I like the people, though. They cool. Now, when you were younger, did you ever come to know an individual by the name of Jeffrey Williams? Yeah. How long have you known Jeffrey Williams? Uh, I'm not good with time. I like Since we was kids. About how old were you when you first met him? I can't remember the age. Was as far it, as I can remember, I knew him. Do you believe it's why you were in elementary school, middle school, or something else? <clears throat> mm, I, I, I been knew him. I can't. Okay. How did y'all? Before meet? I knew him, I knew of him. Put it like that. I knew his family members before I knew him. What? Which family member did you know before you knew him? 
His mom, his dad, his sisters. How did you know his mom, his dad, and his sisters? I can't remember which one of them, but they stayed in my my apartments. I don't know if it was his mom and dad, but they stayed in my apartment. I just never seen him. I always seen his brothers and sisters. And is, did they stay in your apartments at Gilbert Gardens? Yeah. And since you first saw his family before you met him, did you have any type of relationship with his family members? Um, I was a kid. It was just they had the basketball court. You know? <clears throat> now, do you call him Jeffrey Williams? Huh? Do you call him Jeffrey Williams when you refer to him? Do you I don't call, him? call nobody by their whole name. Okay. What did you call him? Little Jeff. Anything else? Just call him a lot of names. He's a lot of nicknames. Okay. What are some of the other nicknames? Uh, Prune. It's a family nickname. Okay. I heard his family calling it. I called him start calling him that too. I don't know, joking, playing with him. Anything else? That's all I can remember. Uh-huh. And do you see um, Jeffrey Williams in the courtroom today? Yeah. Okay. Can you identify him by article of clothing he's wearing? All right, it shows out. The record will reflect. Thank you. Now, you said that you had met his family first and then you met him. Do you remember the circumstances of how you <coughs> met um, Mr. Williams? I can't really remember, man. <laughs> you asked me to think about a long, long time ago. You know how much I've been through since then? Yeah. Have you been through a lot? Tremendously. And we're going to talk about some of those things over the course of this time together. Yeah, I don't remember my first encounter. Okay. What was your relationship like with Mr. Williams when you all were younger? I mean, in any relationship, just like any other friends. You're young. You just want to have fun. What type of things did y'all do together to have fun? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of our biggest things was listening to music. The Dasset music. What kind of music would y'all listen to? All kinds. All genres. Genres, or however you pronounce that word. And would you do this at your home, his home, or somewhere else? Everywhere we go. As your relationship developed with Mr. Williams, did your relationship with any of his family members develop? I understand what you what you asking. Sure. You and Mr. Um, Williams have been friends since childhood. As you all continued your relationship and your friendship, did you grow your relationship with any of his other family members? His mom, his dad, any of his siblings? Yeah. Okay. My mama called him son. His mama called me son. What about um, his dad? Did you have a relationship with his father? Um, we were cool. I ain't never really just... I ain't never had my dad, so you feel me? I ain't really good with authority. But it was cool. I respected him. He respected me. Did you ever look to his father as a father figure for you? No. And then what about his siblings? Did you ever develop a relationship with any of his siblings? Yeah. Okay. Who? All of them. And how many siblings does he have? Two men in the count. Does he have a sister by the name of Dolly? Yeah. Okay. Did you have a relationship with, a friendship with Dolly? Yeah. And does he have a sister named Dora? 
Yeah. Did you have a friendship or relationship with his sister, Dora? Yeah. Okay. Or all his siblings, not just them. Did you and Mr. Williams ever go to school together? I think we went to alternative school at the same time. I ain't sure. And did the two of you ever do any recreational activities? I mean, sports or anything like that? Did you play on any sports teams together or anything of that nature? I never played sports. What is your current relationship with Mr. Williams? I don't have a relationship with him. When did that relationship cease? It, it never ceased. It's just I went to prison. And while, while you were in prison, you did not maintain your relationship or friendship? When you were in prison, you don't retain no relationship. All that in. And since you got out of prison, did you not rekindle your friendship when you, when you got out of prison? I had impo more important relationships to worry about than friends. Like my kids. <clears throat> Permission to approach? As long as you've shown that to defense counsel already. Yes, Sean, I believe they all have it on the PowerPoint. I'm going to show you must be Marcus State's Exhibit 3, Charlie Charlie. Do you recognize the individuals inside of State's Exhibit 3, Charlie Charlie? Yeah. Um, and how do you recognize the people in the picture? It's me. Okay. Is that a fair, accurate depiction of you in that picture? Yeah. Does it look like you? Yeah. Is there anyone else in that picture? Yeah. Okay. And does it look like that person who was in the picture? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, State would like to send us State's Exhibit 3, Charlie Charlie, into evidence. Any objections to State's 3, Charlie Charlie? No, uh, All right. State's 3, Charlie Charlie is admitted and may be published as you see fit. Now, looking at Stacey Exhibit 3, Charlie, Charlie, um, who's in the picture? Me. And who else? Legia. All right. And in looking at that picture, do you recall when that picture was taken? <coughs> no. Okay. Is it before you went to prison, um, either in 2014 or 2015? Yeah. <laughs> Now, Mr. Murph, do you have a nickname? I have a couple nicknames. Okay. What are your nicknames? DK, Dewey. That's a couple. That's it? You said a couple. All right. And how did you get your either of your nicknames, DK or Dewey? My mama named me that. Your mama names you? Yeah, D my family called me that. They call you Dewey? Yeah, and DK. What does DK stand for? It's a couple of those meanings, too. Okay. What are they? Dual cartel, the kid. A couple. What is Dewey cartel? What does the cartel signify, if anything? Hmm? Huh? It's just a name. You don't... Like, Dewey don't mean name cartel. It's just a name. How did you come up with that name, Cartel? I didn't come up with it. My family, it was given to me. Were you ever associated with a group, Red Cartel? A music group, yeah. Is it only a music group? I don't know what it is today. I know what it was when I was with them. When did you first get involved with Red Cartel? I can't remember that. <laughs> that was like 20 years ago. So you think it was in about 2004? That that's 20 years ago? 
I don't know about that joint. I don't know. All right. Let's do this. When you got involved with Dewey Cartel, was it first before you got the privilege? When I got involved with Dewey Cartel, that's my name. Excuse me, Frank Cartel. Ask the question again. When you got involved with Red Cartel, was it before you went to prison? So before 2015? Yeah. That's old. And you said it was about 2004. Were you living at Gilbert Gardens? I didn't when you, say that. You said it was about 20 years ago, I right? was over-exaggerating. Okay. I was over-exaggerating. Saying 20 years I was being... So do you think it was more than 20 years ago or less than 20 years ago when you got involved with Red Cartel? I don't know. I've been through a lot. I did, like, a lot of prison time. Okay. And I used a lot of that time to, like, focus on changing. And that's what I did. So I don't really think about stuff like that. You feel me? And I understand. And it's good that you're changing. But we're just going to talk about this for a little while. And then we'll move forward to where you are currently. Is that okay? Just that you feel like they got something to do with currently? Me? No, we're going to talk about what you're doing currently. But we're going to talk about this for right now. And then we'll go back to what you're doing currently. Okay. All right? So, when you first got with Red Cartel, was that why you were living in Gilbert Gardens or when you were living off of Cleveland and Browns Mill Road? Cleveland Avenue. Okay. So, that would have been around 2005 when you started with Red Cartel. If you say so, yeah. That's when, so I, I, moved, I, that's when I moved to Cleveland Avenue. Okay. How did you get involved with Red Cartel? It was um, um, a music group who was rapping or trying to rap. How did you learn about Red Cartel? How did I learn about it? Yeah, how did you learn about Red Cartel? <clears throat> it was a group of guys rapping. I just, we was all cool. We just... Do you know when Red Cartel formed? No. When you got involved with Red Cartel, you said it was a group of guys. About how many guys are part of this rap group, Red Cartel? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Was it more than two? I can't remember. All right. Were you the only person rapping in the group? No. They wouldn't be a group. It was just me. All right. So then how many more people besides you was in Red Cartel? I can't say. I don't want to lie. Okay. Was it more than 10? Yes. All right. Was it more than 20? Uh, I can't remember. I don't, I don't want to lie. Okay. I know it was more than 10, though. More than 10. And the members of Red Cartel, did they live in that Cleveland, Browns Mill Road area or somewhere else? Um, kind of all over the place. We was all from Gilbert Garden, so we, they tore down the projects and everybody just scattered. Now, you said they were all from Gilbert Gardens. When you were living at Gilbert Gardens, did you know some of these individuals who now form this group, Red Cartel, in 2005? Yeah. Were the members of Red Cartel older or younger or the same age as you? Both. Outside of music, was Red Cartel known for anything else? Not to my knowledge. Did you have to do anything to join this music group, Red Cartel? No. Did you have to rap so they can determine if you knew how to rap or do whatever other type of music? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If that's what you're talking about, do something. Yeah, yeah so how did you get involved? Or how would you become a part of Red Cartel? I mean, dude, so they would have to like your music, I guess. Do you know who founded Red Cartel? Mm, no, I don't. It was an older dude than me, though. But I don't, like, know him like that. What was his name? 
Uh, I don't know. He was before my time. You said he was before your time. So do you know roughly when Red Cartel started? No. Do you know how they came up with the name Red Cartel? No. As a member of Red Cartel, did you wear any specific colors? No, you can wear whatever color you want to wear. Did you all have any particular clothing that you wore? Uh, I think we did have like shirts or something with like our names on them. So something like that. I, don't, I can't really remember, but I know we, I think we had like some shirts. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what's been previously admitted as exhibit one. Slide 22. It's slide 26 for you all, but it's it was originally slide 22. So looking at what's on the screen, which is Stacey Exhibit 1, which was slide 22, then... Right. Sir, we, um, do you all want to take a look at it? No, no, no. Okay. I, I just come on. Can I look at it? Bring it up here, please, so I can look at it.
I'm going to show you again. Thanks, Exhibit 1, slide 22. When you talked about the red cartel clothing, um, is that some of the quote that you were referencing a few moments ago? I don't remember that. The ones on tomorrow, we had our name on it, like individually. <laughs> had our name on it. And looking at that, do, do you see the back of it on the right hand side? Which part is the back? So let's go to the one on the left hand side. Do you see the individual with a with a chain around their neck? Yeah. Okay. I see that. And does that appear to be the front of someone? I guess. All right. And what does that shirt say? Can you read it? Your Honor, it's not in evidence. He said he does not recognize him. Your Honor, it is in evidence. We need to approach Stacey. It is in evidence. It's just a little better. So I don't know how old was that man? That's in evidence. Looking at Stacey's exhibit number one, the front of that shirt, what does it say? It says so what at the top, and then I can't see what they say on this side. On I guess that's the left bottom. Okay. They got something right there. You see what the right bottom says? Bloody. Okay. And on the other picture, can you read what the, what it says on the other picture at the top? They're like graffiti letters or something. I can't understand that. So you can't you can't read what it says at the top. Okay, I see the oh red cartel. And I don't know what that is on the end though. It's kind of weird. On which end? The right top. You mean the wording after cartel? Yeah. Okay. Do you see what it says by underneath red cartel? Creek City Records. Okay. And then underneath that, do you see what it says? I don't know what that said at the bottom, but the other part say gang. Okay. And is that the same red cartel that you were just referencing that is the music group that you were a part of? Um, uh, I've never seen it wrote like that, though. Okay. But is that the red cartel that you were referencing, the music group that you were a part of? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. All right. Thank you. Did Red Cartel have any alliances with anyone? No, not that I know of. <clears throat> Did Red, Red Cartel ever associate or affiliate themselves with the Rock Crew? Um. Okay, all right. So what's your relevancy? I don't know Did Red Cartel have any alliances with a group, the Rock Crew? Um, I think they had like music together. Huh? That's so, about as far as I remember. I don't really know if they alliance. What do they mean? That's a big word. Okay. Did anyone from Red Cartel associate with anyone from Rock Crew? We all stayed right by each other. Okay. Went to the same school. I, you feel me? All right. And Rock Crew, was that a gang of individual, of members who were from the Cleveland Avenue area? A gang? Okay. What is your understanding of Rock Crew? Rock Crew was Cleveland Avenue. <laughs> And we say it was Cleveland Avenue. What do you mean? Like the people from Cleveland Avenue. And did Rock Crew have a founder um, who gathered the individuals who were off of Cleveland Avenue? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. Now, you said that we all stay off of Cleveland Avenue. Do you know any individuals who associated themselves with Rock Crew? When you say associate, like, what you mean by that? That they were a part of, they considered themselves rock crew, they called themselves rock crew. Do you know anyone 
like that. The whole, all the kids from Cleveland Avenue when I was younger, it was kids. Man. Yeah, appreciate that. No problem. Who were some of the people that you knew who were from Cleveland Avenue that associated themselves or called themselves Rock Crew? I can't remember their name. Who was in middle school? Who were kids? Man. <laughs> Tell me some of the people that you may remember. I can't really remember nobody's name like that. I try to forget about Cleveland Avenue. I ain't been on Cleveland Avenue in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Do you know an individual by the name of Trontavia Stevens? Yeah. Okay. Was Trontavia Stevens a part of Rock Crew? Mm, a part of it? I can't really say he was a part of it. I mean, I guess you would have to be rock crew to say he's a part of it. I, would, I don't really know that. Jeffrey Williams, was he a part of rock crew? I I don't know. Um, He's not even from Cleveland Avenue. Did he ever hang around Cleveland Avenue? We both did, yeah. Quindarius Zachary, do you know who that is? Never heard of that Do you know who Little D is? I know a couple of Little D's. Charlie, Charlie, or five, Charlie, Charlie? Yeah. Okay. And do you know some of the other individuals aside of four, Charlie, Charlie, or five, Charlie, Charlie? Yeah, I know some of them. I know him. Okay. And does that appear to be fair at the depiction of yourself? along with other people that you may know inside of both 4 Charlie Charlie and 5 Charlie Charlie. Yeah. Okay. You're on this time staying like the 10 to 6 to the 4 Charlie Charlie and 5 Charlie Charlie. Exactly. Any objections to states uh, 4 Charlie Charlie and 5 Charlie Charlie? Okay. Again, admit it. I may be focused as you see fit. Now, I have a picture, though. There's writing on it as well. Can I see it? Thanks.
Do with me that those pictures are not taken on the same day. I, I can't remember. Are you wearing the same clothes in four Charlie Charlie that you wore in five Charlie Charlie? Because mm -mm, I ain't got a hat on. Okay. And it's your testimony say you, you don't know who that is? I do not know who that is. All right. Do you know individual by the name of Quentin Porter or Big Boo? <clears throat> boo. Yeah, I know Boo. Do you know him to be a part of Rock Crew? I mean, a part of it. He from Cleveland Avenue, if that's what you ask. Do you know him to be the founder of Rock Crew? I don't know who the founder of Rock Crew. I don't even know when they were found. Now, with Red Cartel, um, was Red Cartel ever associated with any gang? I don't remember. We were just wearing red. You said you don't remember? I don't recall. Okay. But you were just wearing red? Yeah. Do you know why you all were just wearing red? It was just a color. <clears throat> why red versus any other color? I don't, I don't know. Did you ever I ask? ask why we wear red and not purple, blue, green, orange? I like the red. You like the red? Yeah. I think it's a nice color. Did you ever associate or call yourself a, mini, a member of any gang? Mm, I might have did. You might have did? Okay. Yeah. What gang might you have did call yourself a member of? Um, blood. When did you when did you start calling yourself a member of the blood? Um, I can't remember what yeah, it was just let's go back to our time. To try to orient you. Was it when you were living in Gilbert Gardens or Cleveland Avenue and Browns Mill Road? Uh I think When I started calling myself a blood, mm -hmm. <clears throat> probably when I was living off of Cleveland. So, so this time period off of here. Now, was there any particular faction of blood that you were calling yourself to be a part of? Faction. Like, was there any particular blood set? No, I just thought being blood was cool. It was like rappers and people with being blood, I thought it was cool. How did you become a blood? Hmm? How did you become a blood? I didn't. I just started saying I was blood. So, I, if that's what you mean. I... So you didn't have to do anything in order to become a blood. You just started calling yourself a blood. Yeah. Did you hang around with other individuals who are bloods? <clears throat> hmm? Did you hang around any other individuals that called themselves Bloods? I don't know. I, I know I was calling myself Blood. I don't know what nobody else was doing. Did you hang around other people and y'all were in a group together and each of you all called each other Bloods? Was there ever a time that you <coughs> and other people were together and called yourselves Bloods? I'm trying to figure out who, like, what you're saying. I, that I don't understand that. I've hung around people who call themselves Crip, Christian, Muslim. I don't hang around all kind of people. So I'm asking specifically about the Bloods. Did you, were you ever in a group with other individuals who call themselves Bloods? Judge, is your honor hearsay? I'm not. I'm going to go with the Matthews. 
Can you ask the question again? Sure. Were you ever in a group or associate yourself around other individuals who call themselves bloods? In prison or jail, probably. What about outside of jail? I don't recall that happening outside of jail, though. Courts and felons. Now, as a blood, or while you were calling yourself a blood, um, did you ever commit any crimes while you called yourself a blood? Huh? Did you ever commit any crimes while you called yourself a blood? Uh, I'm like, what you mean, like? While I'm doing the crime, like, I'm a blood. What, what are you saying? Sure. While you were in that 2005 era that you said you started becoming a blood, were you committing crimes? Start becoming, I call myself a blood. I ain't right. start okay. becoming a blood. Okay. So you start calling yourself a blood around 2005. Yeah. All right. During that time period, did you ever <clears throat> commit any crimes? In 2005? Yes. No, I was in school. Are you familiar with the blood set sex money murder? Mm, yeah, I heard of it. How have you heard of sex money murder? Jail, prison, in songs. I heard about it a lot of places. Did you ever call or claim yourself to be a part of sex money murder? Mm. Yeah. When did you do that? What I don't years? I remember what year. Okay. When what? it got popular, everybody was calling themselves that. Was that around the same time that you started calling yourself a blood? Whenever blood got popular, that's when I started calling myself blood. That would be around the same time now. And did you have to do anything in order to call yourself a part of sex money murder? What you mean do anything? I don't understand it. Were you just able to wake up one morning and start calling yourself a part of sex money murder? Yeah. <clears throat> and did you hang around other individuals that call themselves or that were members of sex money murder? I don't know what nobody else was doing. I know what I was doing. <laughs> now, you said that you heard about being a blood in prison. You recall just saying that a few moments ago? Hmm? That you recall hearing about being a blood in prison. Do you remember saying that? I recall about hearing about being a blood in prison? Yes. Who should I put Cleveland Avenue right there? I wasn't in prison in 2005. Right. While you were in prison, did you, while you were in prison, did you still claim to be a member of the Bloods? You asked me about being around a group of people who call themselves a Blood. I said that would have had to be in prison or in jail. Okay. That's what I said. I didn't say calling or none of that, what you just said. So I'm asking you, while you were in prison, did you call yourself a Blood while in prison? When I went to prison, no. Why not? Cause I want a new life. I ain't want. I ain't want to be out there. I want to take care of myself and do better, as I am now. I feel like that was childish. Have you ever heard of the term false flag or false claiming? Yeah, I've been called that. You've been called that.
to your knowledge, did any of the individuals that we talked about, Trontavia Stevens, do you know if he associated himself with sex money murder? I don't know. Nobody else was doing. I know what I was doing. <laughs> what about Jeffrey Williams? To your knowledge, did he claim himself to be a part of sex money murder? I don't know what nobody else was doing. I know what DK was doing. Mr. Murphy, back in 2011, 2012, did you have a Twitter account? A Twitter? Yes. Well? 2011, 2012. Mm. Yeah, that probably, yeah. I think I did. That one on Twitter was kind of like the thing back then. And do you recall what your Twitter name was back in 2011 and 2012? Uh, I don't remember the name. I had one, though. Do you remember having the name of Young Slime Life DZ or at Cartel underscore the UK? Mm -mm. Do you remember having a Twitter account? That was one name you just said. Do you recall having a Twitter account? I remember the uh Did I'm confused though. Can you say the name again? Sure. Did you have a tag thing at cartel underscore DK? Yeah, I remember that. And was the name associated with that? Young Slime Life underscore. Oh, that's the little. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that probably, yeah. Was that you? Yeah. I'm going to show you what's been marked at State's Exhibit 8CC. Do you recognize your name, your Twitter name, at cartel underscore DK on there? At the top. Yeah. Okay. And matter of fact, do you see an image of yourself on, State's, on the front page of State's Exhibit 8, Charlie Charles? Yeah. And was that the Twitter handle that you had back in 2011 and 2012? Uh -huh. And I want you to flip through it, take your time, look at some of these tweets, and I'll, you see that at Cartel DK making some tweets within that package. 
Okay, yeah, I don't want the person with that password, though. You the only person with it? I wasn't the only person okay. with it. That's fine. But flip through, do you see some tweets with the at card? From at card, so I'm just going to What the question was again? Sure. Do you see tweets from that um, Twitter account at cartel underscore you? Yeah. All right. And again, was that your Twitter handle back in 2011 and 2012? Yeah. Right. During this time, the state like the Tennessee State Exhibit, Charlie Charlie. And Jackson State's Charlie Charlie. No, not happening to work. Um, okay, I noted that, Mr. Harvey. Uh, so deny that. I'll give you a continuing objection. Um, Mr. Steele, no objection, no further objection as to Sage Charlie Charlie. Right? Okay, all right. Sage Charlie Charlie is admitted and may be published as you see fit. Okay. Mr. Um, Murphy, you can look on either screen on the side or, or behind you. We're going to start with the first page of 8 Charlie Charlie, okay? You were going to go through that whole thing? Not all of it, but some of it, yes. Now, Now, excuse me. Look at this first tweet from January 29th, 2012. Is that you? Yeah. And underneath the tweet, is there a caption? I can't see now. Above the picture and underneath at cartel underscore DK, is there a caption? Yeah. What does it say? It say what's right there. Okay, so what does it say? Say it's money murder. All right. And is that is that you in this picture? I don't answer that. Okay. What's what are you doing with your hands? You no, know it's crazy. I never I don't even know what that means. <laughs> So you were just taking a picture and you don't know what the hand symbol means? Yeah, I don't know what that means. It looked fine though, back then. All right. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit to September 4th, 2000, excuse me, January 10th, 2012. Do you see that tweet with the different hashtags? Yeah. Okay, what does that say? That's a sexy money murder. Okay. <clears throat> we'll go down to the next one on January 4th. I don't 4th. think I tweeted that, though. That's, that's probably a girl. Okay. 
So that wasn't you, you believe it was someone else? Yeah, a couple people had my oh. password. Who all had your um, password I to your... I ain't trying to put no folk in there, but they had it, though. Okay. It's How many okay. people had your password? A couple. When you say a couple, what does that mean? Two? About three. When you have here on January 4th, 2012, what does that say? Hmm? On what day? January 4th, 2012. Mm. Black, black. Banging sex, money, murder. I don't know what that other. Like, a bunch of letters. What is black? I don't know. That just seemed, I thought it was cool. Everybody else was doing it. So you were just typing and you had no idea what black meant? Mm-hmm. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Ms. Burke, did you take a plea in this case? Did I take a plea? Yeah. Yeah. And as a part of this plea, um, did you fill out a plea agreement in this case? Did I fill it out? Did you sign an initial on a plea agreement? I initially, yeah. All right. And did you have an opportunity to go over this plea agreement with your attorney, Mr. Jacoby Hudson? When you say go over, what you mean? Did go you? over, like, thoroughly? I'm going to ask you, did you? We can talk about thoroughly, but I'm going to first ask you, did you have an opportunity to look at this document prior to you signing it um, to take a plea in this case? Prior, what do you mean? What you mean by that? Sure. Before you signed it, did you and your attorney go over it? Mm, yeah, we went over it. Okay. And did you talk about all the contents that was inside of it when you went over it? Yeah, but it was, yeah. Okay. And did you essentially end up signing and initialing certain acknowledgments inside of this plea agreement? Did I initially? Yes. Okay. And did you understand what you initialed? That's a good question. Oh, did you? I did, but I didn't, though. Okay, it's, what does that it's mean? It's kind of confusing, because I, I understood it, but I didn't understand, like, this part of it. When you say this part of it, what Like, do you testifying mean? part, I didn't understand that part. Okay, but did you understand what you read in initial, the acknowledgments? We're going to talk about the acknowledgments, right? And do you need to look at it to see what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. Y'all are permission to approach? All right, so I'm going to show you what's been marked in Stacey's Bill 1, Carl and Charlie. And I want to specifically direct your attention <coughs> right now we're going to focus on page 3. Are you on page 3? Oh, yeah. Okay, and I'm going to look at number nine on page three. Okay. All right. When you went over that with your attorney, did you understand what you were going over? Yeah, but that's why I say it was confusing because it say some of the language. Don't, don't, don't read anything on there yet. When you went over this and you initialed it. Yeah, I believe Mr. Murphy has a right to make this. He does. So uh, let him finish that. Mr. But it's Murphy, not admit us. I didn't want him to read from the document. He was responding to a question. So let's go ahead and see what he has to say, okay? Did you have something else you want to say, Mr. Murphy? Yeah, he say... Some of the language that YSL members use, that's what I was trying to, like, I don't know the word I'm trying to say, but that's what I was trying to say, like, <laughs> people was using these words way before, some of these words way before. Okay. YSL even was a label or we start a group or anything like that. But let me ask you this here, what I'm asking you right now, very specifically, when you went over this document, did you understand what you were reading on the document itself?
Like, did I understand the... The words on the page? Yeah. Okay. And did you end up signing this plea agreement um, when you took your plea in this case? Yeah, I signed it. Okay. And did you sign it with your attorney? Yeah. All right. And did uh, Miss Love also sign this document? Yeah. Um, Your Honor, this other state, like the tender states, is just one Charlie Charlie. Any objection to states one Charlie Charlie? Yes. All right. States one Charlie Charlie. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about this document, but I want to, since we're talking about the word black, I just ask you if you knew what black meant. On page three of states, it's just one Charlie Charlie. At number nine, what does number nine say? Some other language that YSL members you would, would use is something. Okay, and then what does it say under A? Black. And then what does it say? But I heard that way before YSL even. Sure. Answer my question. Finish reading. What does A say? It say black. And what else does it say? Oh, which means blood and love all the time. Okay. And so when I just asked you a few moments ago, if you knew what black meant, why did you tell me you did not know what it is? Now I remember. I, bro, I don't got a whole life. I don't, you think I'm sitting at home or at work thinking about black? I'm not thinking about that, bro. I got four kids. I'm not thinking about that. But back in 2011, you used that terminology black. Yeah. All right. And in 2012, did you use that terminology? Huh? In 2012. You should ask me that, didn't it? I asked you about 2011. In 2012, did you use that terminology? I did what they just said on that tweet. So, do you know what black means? Now I recall what it means. So, you had to use it to refresh your memory? Is that what you want to call it? And I want to go down to August 25th, 2012. Can you read that tweet on? August 25th, 2012. That's a song. Okay, what does it say? It's been a long time coming, baby. I just called to see how you've been doing lately. Now, you just said it's been a long time coming. Is there a B or a C there for coming? It's a B. Okay. Why would you tweet it? It's just what I was doing right there. I, I, I did a lot of stuff without meaning or purpose. I was childish, young, dumb. And when you say, baby, I just, you, you said call. Why did you put the B for the C there? Huh? You, when you read it, you said, baby, I just called. But when you tweeted it, you put a B. Why did you? Cause this not me no more. I'm grown now. That was a kid. I was. And I'm asking you about 2020. I told you we're going to get to 2024. I'm asking you now about 2020. Yeah, cause I just told you that's not me no more. I understand it's not you anymore. But back in 2012, I'm asking why did you forget? Cause I was just doing stuff. I just told you that. <clears throat> I was promoting music. Okay. And who's music? Lil Jeff. All right. And what did you write in order to tweet his music? Huh? What does the tweet say? Yeah. I was telling everybody that it's going down at the 
the club we probably been going to. Okay, so read what it says. It's going down tonight. Um, however you say that, at Thugger Thugger, Black Black. Why'd you put Black Black? I was just doing stuff, I told you that. Okay. But why put it, you're promoting his music. Why do you need to put Black Black just promoting? I put it, when I wasn't promoting that, then I was just tweeting and I put it. So I, like, I was just doing stuff. Okay. It's just being a kid, being extra. So before you continue, I think our jury's asking for a comfort break. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take 10 minutes for that comfort break, and we'll reconvene at that point in time. All rise. Mr. Murphy, you can take 10 minutes. I'm more recess.
Murphy, can you get him, please? Thanks, Christine. Hmm? Hey, what do you think about my shoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about my shoes? Yeah, yeah, All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, Ms. Hilton, you may continue, madam. Now, before we talk about this, okay? Go back to 8 Charlie Charlie. Do you see that tweet from November 28, 2011, Mr. Murphy? At the top of the page? Yeah. Yeah, that's the top one? The top one. Yeah, that's well, it. Can you read it? Why are you trying to make me read all that childish stuff, man? Let me ask you this. In 2011, you were 20 years old? Yeah. All right. Can you read it, please? I was still a child, though, mentally. I won. Okay. Because that's what you were getting at, right? My age. But you were 20 years old. Yeah, I was 20 years old. I was physically grown, but mentally I was not in my right mind. I understand. Okay. Can you read it? Don't let these niggas trick y'all. They not with this red cartel shit. Great. See what I'm saying? That don't even make sense. Okay. And I'm on bleeding with it. Pull up. Whatever that part of me. Guns and hate it on hood. And that was a tweet that came from your account. Whether it's a child or not, you tweeted that from your account. I don't remember tweeting it. Okay. But it's... That's my account, though. All right. <clears throat> Next... I'm going to go to that same exhibit, and we're going to look at August 17th. Well, let me back up. This um, tweet on October 7th, 2012, at the top of the page. The blurry side of that, is, is that you? No, it might be. Okay. Who's the person next to you? That Buck. That's Buck? Yeah. Do they call him Buck Buck? Buck, Buck, Buck. Okay. I, don't know. I call him Buck. All right. And. And what does that tweet say? I am my brother's keeper. I love you, little bro Brody. And what are the hashtags? Real nigga club, bitch. SMM. And ROB. Little <laughs> Heidi. Okay. What's ROB? I don't know, I think that's like rock crew. Okay. When you say you think that's rock crew, what do you mean? I think that's rock crew. What I said. Okay, so rock crew also used ROB. Yeah. Okay. And what did the B in ROB stand for? I don't know. I can't tell you what it stands for. Okay. I know that 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 mean rock crew though. All right. <clears throat> 
and going down on that same page on August 17th, 2012, what does that tweet say? I'm going to rob. I'm going to R-O-B every day. I don't Okay. I think I, if I tweeted that, I definitely misspelled it. Okay. And why would, why do you believe you would have definitely misspelled it if you would have tweeted it? Because I probably would have said, like, I'm on Cleveland every day. Okay. All right. And looking at the tweet on November 7, 2012, what does that say? On what, man? November 7, 2012. R.O.B. Bath? Black, black, I don't, I don't even know what none of that means. All right. But that's a tweet from your Twitter account. Yeah. All right. We're going to go. All right. We're going to go to the next tweet, which will be on September 7th, 2000. When you say the next tweet, that's the next tweet that came off that account? No, no, no. We're, I'm sorry. I was talking to you. I'm just talking uh -huh. to Miss uh, Miss Knight. Now, September 7, 2012, did you retweet a tweet? I don't know what I did, but then. Okay. What is the tweet that's on September 7, 2012? Maybach, Rolex, yeah. um, back, what? On September 7, oh. 2012. Re Rolex? If you can read, you know what I'm banking. I'm a billboard. What? I'm a billboard for the set. I don't even know what that mean. Pete Gang or Net, I don't know what that mean. So you don't know what Pete Gang is? No. Okay. I never heard of that. All right. Do you know who Reek underscore Rolak is? No. All right. Have you ever heard of Peter Rolak? No. All right, we can move to May 26, 2012. Right. Looking at May 26, 2012, what does that tweet say? Mob SMM. Okay, what does SMM stand for? Says my murder. All right, now we're gonna skip down to May 10th, 2012, on that same page. What did you tweet on that page, on, on that date? I, I said I want the only person with this account. I don't... Okay. What was tweeted from that account? Okay. Where that you said? May 10th, 2012. Fuck a nigga if he ain't SMR. And what's the tweet on May 7, 2012? Let's fly hot, SMM. Okay. That's a song. All right. And is SMM, is that for sex, money, murder? No, oh, that's a song. But is SMM for sex, money, murder? I already wrote it. I already said it. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Jason, sir. I stand with crime objection. Going to May 30th, 2012. You can read it. Oh. May 30th. May 30th. Got the whole SMM behind me. Black and some emojis. Okay. What are the emojis? Two water guns, a finger, and some... some um, O's. Okay. Is there any significance of why you have two water guns versus one or three? I, or, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not the only person who had the password to that account. Right. Once again. Is there any significance of why there is a bolded B? I wasn't the only person with that account. Once again. All right. 
Is there any significance to the bolded B? I don't remember. All right. And then going down to August 5th, 2012, what does that say? My SMM family. That's what you're talking about? Well, you can look at that too, but I was looking at the one beneath that, August 5th, 2012. Huh? I was the August fifth? August 5th, 2012. I just pray to God I make it to be 21. And then what does it say after all the exclamation points? It's a R05 SMM. What does R05 mean? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. All right. Now, you said that other people had access to your account. What was your relationship to these other people that had access to your accounts? Girls I was dealing with. Friends. Girls I was dealing with. Friends. So were the girls that you were dealing with or your friends, were they a part of SMM? I don't want to put these people. These people ain't got nothing to do with me being up here or none of that. You don't know who the people are. I'm just asking you, were they a part of SMM? I don't recall. Okay. So why would they be tweeting about SMM? If it's not you. The same reason everybody was doing it back then. It was, it was the popular thing. Now, I want to go back. <clears throat> I think before we took a break, you said that, I believe you said something to the effect of you never claimed or be, were ever in a group outside of prison with other blood members. Do you recall saying that? Huh? Do you recall saying before we took a break that you had never been in a group with other blood you outside? You said, was I in a group? With people who call themselves blood. Correct. I said that would have had to be in prison or jail. Right. And I asked you outside of jail or prison, have you ever been in a group of individuals who are bloods? And you said no. Yeah. All right. I want to show you what's already been admitted at 60 WA. I want you to watch the video on the screen. Hey, baby. 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 Hey, we working too. We working. We working on the block. Hey man, where most of y'all niggas ran up with, man. My little girl got it on right now, man. I'm Trey, man. She got, listen, she got a car and she ain't even walking yet. And that's on Trey. Hey, it's about. Hey, Rock, who's Trey, man? Look. Man, what? I, they gotta get out the car. I really don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> Bitch. Hey, hey, yeah, ho. Yeah, yeah ho. Black two guns up, nigga, salute. You understand me? Yeah, ho. Fourteen twenty six money game, bitch. Okay. I be that bloody trouble banging that sex money murder, man. Get yeah, peed over, beat up. Shit tatted on me, man. You know what I'm saying? Pee up or get beat up, man. You know yeah, ho. Fourteen trouble, sex money murder, man. Cream, cash, rule, everything. When the bitch get okay. through, ho. You heard he just said, he just say, they ain't passing the game. He said, give him an ounce, roll up. Yeah. Hey, man. He said, give him an ounce. He said, he said, give him an ounce. We got our apartments yeah, on go control. To the club, go to the club and get three, four ounces. We got our apartments on control. <laughs> Matter of fact, go to the club and get a pound hood. In a minute, hold on. Yikes. He talking about in a minute. <laughs> and I'm riding with the chopstick. Hey, you talking about? I'm going to show y'all what I'm riding in. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> y'all see big girl early shrimp fried rice? Shrimp fried rice a little bit. With a um, and fruit punch. Man, I'm the only bitch out here in this shit, though. That's serious. Hello. Hello. Hey, y'all, that bitch called Valerie, man. Hello. Hello. Anybody play with him? Hello. Hello. Hello.
1426, man. Louis V, everything. Louis V, true. What's that? What's that? Them Gucci. What's that? You know what I'm saying? They have my family kicking, man. You know what I'm saying? True religion, everything, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They have my family kicking, man. That big bad, man. You know what I'm saying? Little brother and Louis. Louis, he said he, say he wants some, um, some uh, red bottom tomorrow. I told him no problem. I got him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anybody who knows somebody who ain't smoking right now, man, tell them, come on, please. He didn't get any shit away, man. No fuck. I'm talking to Maybach right now. I got weed up. I'm talking to Maybach right now. I'm talking to Maybach, man. We got hold on our part. Man. You know what I'm saying, man? We got cameras and shit out here, man. So anybody think they coming through, think they, they catching them, man? We ain't never slipping, man. We got niggas on walking talkers, man. You know what I'm saying? We got the can lady working. You know what I'm saying? No, man. Everybody bust for Troy, man. You know what I'm saying? They're my blood brother. You know what I'm saying? Bees up. Pee up and get beat up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But DK, they got it, and he got it on. You're DK, right? Are you DK? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Are you in prison in that in this video? Yeah, he said I just got out. Right. So yeah. you are are you are there other bloods in this video? Yeah, I don't it ain't me with the camera. <laughs> but are you in the video with other bloods outside of prison? I'm in the, some apartments in the neighborhood. I'm not with nobody. I'm by myself. I just got out of jail. Okay. Are you in a group with other individuals? Yes, you are asking the answer. I say you get you. Okay. You keep playing. And he got the screen up on him. Did you see those hand signs? Yeah, I seen what, the video. What were, you, what were you doing with your hands? I don't know what I was doing. They were moving though. I don't know. Okay. So you don't know what they were? Mm -mm, I don't know what they mean. I was just doing yeah. stuff. How did you learn those hand signs? You don't learn them. You just move them. Okay. Did someone show you how to do it? I watch videos on YouTube on stuff like that. Okay. And what videos did you watch on YouTube that showed you how to do those particular hand signs? Music videos. Okay. And are y'all doing a music video out there? I can't remember what we were doing out there. And did you have a strap on you that day? I don't recall. I just got out. I, I kept a gun, though, so I probably did have a gun. I don't know, though. And were you supposed to have a strap on you? Huh? Were you supposed to have a strap on you? You had just gotten out? Yeah. You know, were you on bond? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't even know what year that was. Okay. I heard him say my boy DK just got out, though, or something like that. All right. DK just got out. I heard that, though. What apartment <clears throat> complex is this? I'm not sure. I just see buildings. Okay. Let me ask you this. Did you see Trontavia Stevens in that video? Yeah. All right. Who else did you recognize in that video? Um, Legia. Okay. Anybody else? No. He just got out yesterday. He just got out yesterday. This my other blood brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we kick. We kick shit on blue. This is everyday. This is everyday thing. Oh shit! Check out the chucks. This nigga's gonna stop playing like they hold a little bit. I got. I got. Ash and so, again, were you out there with other members who claim blood in this apartment complex? I don't know what they claim. I know what I was claiming. Okay. And what were you claiming while you were out there? I was calling myself a blood. I already said that. Okay. And were these other? did you hear these other people call themselves blood as well? Did you hear them call themselves blood as well in the video? I think so. Okay. Do you know an individual by the name of Christian McMiller or McMahon? McMahon. Yeah. How do you know Mr. McMiller? Um, we were raised up together. How? My play club, my play cousin. When you call, say your play cousin, what do you mean? Play cousin. Okay, what does that mean to you? A play cousin, like, you grow up, you never grew up with nobody and your mom be like, that's your cousin, but that really ain't no blood, no kin to you. Okay, so your families knew each other? We grew up in Gibbon Garden together.
permission to approach? You may, as long as you show it to defense counsel. Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State Exhibit 7, Charlie Charles. Do you recognize any individuals aside of um, State Exhibit 7, Charlie Charlie? Yeah. Um, who do you... Who do you recognize as Exhibit 7, Charlie Charlie? That me. Okay. Anyone else? Matt Lane. Lil Jeff. That's about it. And do you know who the <coughs> God bless you, Rich? Um, and is that fair and accurate depiction of those individuals within that picture? <coughs> God bless you. I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know them other people though. I don't know who I said I know though. Who I seen. And do you remember when you took that picture at all? <coughs> Sure. Do you remember when you all took that picture? Um, I think I think I do. Okay. About what year was that picture? I don't know what year, but I know we was out of town, though. You were where? Out of town. Okay. Is, is that a fair, accurate depiction of that picture that you took while out of town with Mr. Uh, McMiller, Mr. Williams, and yourself, and some other individuals? I think so, yeah. Now, this time, the state like Tennessee, he's a seven, Charlie, Charlie, into evidence. No opposition for Mr. Williams, Your Honor. All right, say Charlie Charlie can is it made and it'll be published as you see fit. I think it's seven Charlie Charlie. Seven Charlie Charlie. Okay. Uh, I was saying objection to the writing was not a uh, Okay. Do, let me take it back for a second. Did you know um the Instagram account that was <laughs> that, that picture is? Huh? You know whose Instagram that is? It's like Thugger Thugger One. No. The O five, O five E. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know whose um, no, Instagram that's account? No, man. You got permission to publish after the bottom redaction. I will redact it and show that to. Are you going to just redact it just to, just to show the picture? Yes, Sean. All right, then I'll, I'll authorize uh, you to publish uh, states Charlie Charlie. <laughs> Seven Charlie Charlie, you said. Thank you, Ronnie. And while we're waiting for this, I know I asked you about Trontavia Stevens. How long had, when did you first meet Trontavia Stevens? I don't remember our first encounter. I know he's younger than me, though, so we we probably, we like one in the same grade or school or that. <clears throat> Did you know him while you were in middle or elementary school or later than that time? I didn't go to elementary school on Cleveland Avenue. Not even that you went to school on Cleveland Avenue, but I'm just talking about time frame. When did you think you first met him? While you were in middle and elementary school or a little bit older than that? I can't remember. Okay. At this point, about how long have you known Trontavia Stevens? It's been a minute. I can't, I can't, like, put a time on it. All right. And what, if anything, did you call, strike that? Did Trontavia Stevens have any nicknames? Little tip. Little tip. Huh? Is that the only thing you call them? That's what I call them. That's what you call them. Okay. Now you said you think you were looking now, Susan. Seven Charlie Charlie. You said you were out of town. Do you recall where you may have been out of town when you took this picture? No, I've been to a lot of different states. Okay, so you don't remember where you were. No. All right. Um. If it's easier, there's a stick. <clears throat> Permission for Mr. Um, Murphy to stand, Your Honor? You may. Mr. Murphy, if you take this stick. What do I want to do that? 
because I'm asking you to. But what if I don't? I'm asking you to stick, please. Thank you so much. Can you point yourself out in the picture? Yeah, I'm at the bottom left. All right. And you said that Mr. Williams is in that right picture? Right beside me to the right. Okay, and where is Mr. McMillan? To the left on the guy on the far right. Can you use your stick that you don't want to use and point him out? To the left of the guy on the far right with the glasses on and the red shirt. Mr. McMillan. Mr. Can Williams. you stand up, sir, please, okay. and just point on the screen? Thank you. I appreciate it. You got to see. Thank you. What's the significance of 1426? I don't know. Okay, you're in a picture with Mr. Williams holding that flag. Is there a significance of 1426? I don't, I don't know. You have to ask him. I don't got that flag. Okay. And what color are you wearing inside of that um, picture? A red shirt. And are these individuals members of Rock Crew or Red Cartel? Rock Crew or Red Cartel? I don't know. I know. I was a member of Red Cartel. I don't know what they gonna be more. Right. Now let's kind of transition. Did there come a point in time in which you no longer affiliate yourself with Red Cartel? Um uh, no. Okay. Do you still affiliate yourself with Red Cartel now? I don't affiliate with nothing but my family and kids. Okay. So when did you stop affiliating with Fred Cartel? When I stopped affiliating with everything. Okay. <coughs> did you ever create a group called YSL? A group, yeah. Okay. Was it something else besides a group? Not to, not to my means of knowledge. Not to your means of knowledge, okay? Do you still have a copy of One Charlie Charlie in front of you? Yeah. Okay. I want to direct your attention to number one on page two. And let me actually go above that. Here it says four. What does it say on four? Hmm? On page two. Are you looking on page two? Yeah. Okay. Do you see the number four? Yeah. What does it say next to number four? Defend, defendants acknowledgement. Okay. And then below that, where it says A, what does it say? All statements below are truthful. All right. And what does number one say? Why sell otherwise known as Young Slime Life began as a neighborhood group but evolved into a gang? Okay. And did you initial number one? Yeah. It, those are your initials, right? Yeah. Okay. So when I just asked you was why sell a gang, why did you tell me you don't know? Did you not acknowledge that in this document? Yeah, but it's a evolved. I don't know when it evolved into a gang. I know when, when I when we made it, it was a, a neighborhood group. It was right. a group of guys from the neighborhood I made it a, a music group. And in this acknowledgement that you initialed, you said it evolved into a gang. That's what you initialed. Yeah. Okay. So why? I don't know when it evolved into a gang, though. I didn't ask you when. I just asked you, did why sell become a gang? Yeah. All right. When did you all form YSL? Mm -hmm. I can't remember the year. Who were the individuals who founded or formed YSL? It was a couple of us. I can't, it was probably about, it was a handful of people though. I can't just name them off the bat, but. Name some of the people you can. Uh, myself. Lil T. And Lil Jeff. 
from Mag YSL, the music group. I know you're saying why I sell the music group, but when you all first started, was it a music group? Yeah. And when you say it was a music group, what what do you mean? Were you incorporated as a music group? What, what do you mean by that? When you say incorporated, what do you mean by that? You're saying that it was a music group. Tell the jury what you mean by it was a music group when y'all first started. What do you mean? I mean, we was trying to rap. We was trying to make money off rapping. That's what I mean. Why did it then evolve into a gang if you were first trying to do music? I don't, I don't know. I guess it, I don't know. Okay. I don't know why it evolved into a gang. Everybody just wanted to be why I said We ain't say we finna be the biggest gang in the world. We ain't do that. How did you come with the name YSL? Um... I think it came from the the designer clothes why I sell, if I'm not mistaken. And why did you, Little Jeff, and Lil Tick decide to form YSL? Because we wanted to rap. We wanted to... Every rapper got like a name or like a music group or something behind them. And we wanted to have like that foundation. I want to direct your attention back to page two of Stacey Exhibit 1's Charlie Charlie. Mm -hmm. What does it say under number two? Why well, say is a group that began in late 2012 in the Cleveland Avenue area of Atlanta, which evolved into a game? Okay, so do you understand that you formed along with Little Jeff and Little Tick YSL in 2012 based upon what you initialed? Yeah. Okay, so about I mean, 2012, is that right? Yeah. I don't even think we were going to Cleveland when it happened, though, but okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What I don't think that? we were going to Cleveland. Like, when we were sitting around, like, we were going to make a, music, like a, a group, a music group, we were, I don't even think we was in Cleveland Avenue. Yeah. Where do you think you were? If you weren't on Cleveland Avenue at that time, where were you? 2012. I don't even think we were hanging on Cleveland then. So where were you hanging? Not on Cleveland, where were you? We wasn't hanging, we was trying to promote music. Did y'all still stay off of Cleveland Avenue? Like lived, yeah. Okay. I did. What about Tick? I don't know where he lived at. What about Lil Jeff? His mom still stayed on Cleveland. All right. Outside of you, Tick, and Lil Jeff, were there other individuals back in 2012 a part of YSL? Maybe like two. Who else? I can't really remember their name, but 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 one of them. Okay. And you don't remember that last individual? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, that no? No. Okay. Now, as one of the founding members of YSL, did you determine how someone could gain access into becoming a part of YSL? Never. Never? Never. So how would you determine if this person could claim or be a part of YSL? How would you make a determination? We never did that. Okay. So anybody could be on YSL? Anybody could be like on YSL. E back in 2012? Any year. To my knowledge, I mean, I've been going to prison for a long time, but we never said, no, bro, you can't be. Like, we ain't do that. Nobody never did. Nah, nothing that I heard of. Do you recall back in
Do you remember back in 2016 having an interview at the Atlanta Police Department with an investigator, Gaither, um, at the Atlanta Police Department? Hmm? And where you? In 2015. Really around August of 2015. I don't know. I, I had an interview, though. I don't remember like, what year with who, though. And in that interview, your attorney, your attorney Jacoby Hudson, who's in the courtroom today, was present along with two detectives of the Atlanta Police Department. Do you remember that? I think so. Okay. And do you remember in that interview speaking to the detectives about the founding of YSL and who founded YSL? Do you recall that? No. Okay. Do you recall within that interview stating that it was you, Tick, Mondo that founded YSL? <clears throat> I don't recall saying that, but... Who is Mondo? A friend. Okay. Is Mondo a founder of YSL? Uh, I wouldn't say. You would not say? Okay, let me ask you this, Mr. Murphy. Since you got out of jail for this case, have you been on interviews with the person named Mondo when he was claiming to be a founder of YSL? Have I been on an interview with him? Like he interviewed me? Not he interviewed you, but he, you, him, and Buck Buck being interviewed and him talking about him being a founder of YSL. Do you remember that? Me being interviewed? You, Mondo, and Buck Buck. I think I went with him to an interview. I don't think I was interviewed though. Okay. And at, in that interview, are you sitting on the couch next to him in the interview? I think I'm sitting next to Buck, but we on the couch. Y'all on the couch. And in that interview, do you remember having conversations about him being a founder as well of YSL? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Confrontation. Hold on, Mr. Matthews. I'll sustain the objection as to form. Maybe you need to rephrase it as to who he was having a conversation with. Okay. We'll get back to that interview from 2023. Let's go back to your 2016 interview, your 2015 August interview. Do you recall in that August 2015 interview telling Detective Gaither and Dennis that when YSL first started, you had to be off of Cleveland Avenue or be from Cleveland Avenue? I don't recall saying that. You don't? I don't. I was on a lot of drugs back then, like. Okay. Back in August. I don't remember none of that, but okay. You were on a lot of drugs when? When you did the interview? All my life. Okay. When you did the interview. I'm sober now, but for a long period of, majority of my life, I was high. Okay. When you did the interview in August of 2015, were you in jail at the time in which you did the interview? in August of 2015. Yeah, I think I was, I was in Rush Street. Okay. And when you went to the interview with Detective Dennis, Detective Gaither, and your attorney, were you high inside that interview? I was high while in Rush Street, so nine times out of 10, I was high. Okay. During that interview, were you able to give them information, which we're gonna get into later, about the case for which you were arrested for. I don't remember that. Um, Back in August... I ain't saying I didn't know I did, though, but I don't remember. Back in August <clears throat> 2015, were you arrested for the shooting of Dexter Montgomery? Yeah, that's what I went to prison for. Okay. And back in August of 2015, did you interview or speak with detectives about that shooting? I know I did an interview. I don't remember what I said, though. Okay. But so, yeah. You, yeah. And did you also talk to them about YSL during that interview? I don't remember that. Okay. 
Now, I know you said earlier that anyone could join YSL. Did there come a point in time where there were more members of YSL that were not from Cleveland Avenue? Can you repeat that? Oh. Sure. When YSL first started, <coughs> were most of the members of YSL from the Cleveland Avenue area? When we started, we was living on Cleveland Avenue, but I want, I'm not from Cleveland Avenue. At some point in time, did you move over to the Cleveland Avenue area? Yeah. Okay. So although you're not, let me back up. When you say you're not from Cleveland Avenue, what do you mean? Uh, that's not where I'm from. If you ask me where I'm from, I'm going to say Gilbert Gardens. Okay. How far is Gilbert Gardens from Cleveland Avenue? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's at the borderline of Forest Park. Okay. In 2005, when you moved over to Cleveland Avenue, in 2012, when you formed um, YSL, had you been living in the Cleveland Avenue area for about seven years at that point? Yeah, I would say. Okay. And so initially, although you were not born on Cleveland Avenue, at this point in time in 2012, had you been over on Cleveland Avenue for a good amount of years? Yeah. All right. And the other individuals, Little Jeff, Tick, Buck Buck Mondo, were they from the Cleveland Avenue area? No. Did they live in the Cleveland Avenue area? No, not all of them. Who did not live in off of Cleveland Avenue? Mondo or Buck Buck. Okay. Where did Mondo or Buck Buck? Where was Mondo from? The West Side. I don't know exactly where, but he's from the West Side. Okay. And what about Buck Buck? The West Side. Both from the West Side? And when you say the West Side, what do you mean? The West Side? I don't know how to... What's, what neighborhood is it? It ain't a neighborhood. It's a part of the city. Do you know what streets are over in the west side of Atlanta? Uh -huh. Zone 3. Do you know what zone is the west side of Atlanta? Zone 1. Zone 1. Outside of Buck Buck and Mondo, were there other members as YSL grew that were not from the Cleveland Avenue area? I don't recall. I don't really, really remember where people from or where they live there and I don't even think about stuff like that. Do you recall in that same interview that I was just referencing in August 2016, excuse me, 2015 interview that you told Gaither, investigate Gaither and investigate Dennis that as Mr. Williams got bigger, things with YSL kind of changed and more people started coming into YSL. Do you recall telling investigator and investigator Dennis that? Your Honor, I'm going to check. Just call the hearsay. Basis? Hearsay. This is. I'm going to the objection, sir. Do you recall telling them that? Say that again? In your interview with. Investigator Gaither and Investigator Dennis. Do you recall telling them that as Mr. Williams got bigger, more people started joining YSL who were not from the Cleveland Avenue area? That sound about right, though. Okay. I don't remember saying that, but that sound about right. And how did you feel about that? Huh? How did you feel about these other individuals now joining YSL? I don't, I don't care. Was YSL affiliated with any national blood gang set? Yeah. Who or what? I don't think I, like, it's just blood. I don't think it's like no particular individual, you know what I mean? So you said it was just blood? It was blood, Crips. You could be anything if you want. You could be Muslim, Christian. Why I say it wasn't no, you got to be this to be wise. No, it was just, you want to be wise there, you can be wise there. Nobody said you can't be wise there. A fan wake up tomorrow and be like, I'm wise there, you wise there. I'm not going to tell you not. Okay. 
So why So You Said was made up of people who are part of other gangs, Bloods and Crips? Yeah. Okay. Who were some of the Crips that were a part of YSL? I don't know one. I don't know. No. Which one do you know? Duke. Okay. Do you know Duke's real name? No, I don't remember his real name. I don't remember his real name. Do you recall in that same August 2015 interview stating that Pee Wee Roscoe was a crip who was a part of YSL? Mm, no, I don't remember saying that, but... I... That's about right, though, I guess. Do you, do you know who Pee Wee Roscoe is? I know who Roscoe is. All right. Is he a crip? Mm, yeah. And From my it? knowledge, I don't know if he a real crip, but he could just be saying he crip. I don't know. And was he a part of YSL? Yeah, he worked for, uh, for La Jail. Prior to him working for Lil Jeff, was he a part of YSL? I ain't never seen him until he started working for Little Jeff. And what did he do for Little Jeff? I think he was his manager or something like that. I don't know. What kind of manager? I ain't sure what kind. I just know he answered a lot of calls. When did you first meet um, Pee Wee Roscoe? Mm -hmm. I can't really recall when I met him. He always been around, though. Like, I always seen him out. I don't been knew him, been knew about him, you say that. Okay. When you say he's always been around, are you talking about from 2005, 2012? When you say he's always been around, give me a time frame. I seen him on TV before I even seen him in person. Yeah. Before seeing him on TV, I'm so, so talking about in person. When do you first recall encountering Pee Wee Roscoe? At the studio where he worked for Lil Jeff. Okay, and around what year? That's the first time I, I spoke to him, but I seen him before that, like, in in person. Okay. What years are we talking about? I can't remember what year it was, though. Let's go back to our timeline. I mean, if he was working for Lil Jeff, it had to be, like, around 2015. Around 2015. Yeah. Before, like, right before I went to prison or something. Now, within YSL, did any members have to pay dues to get into YSL? Huh? Did anyone have to pay dues? Like right, pay money? Pay money, yeah. No. Okay. Did anyone have to commit any crimes to be a part of YSL? No, not to my knowledge. All right. Did members of YSL have to assist with payments of bond or putting money on people's commissary if they were in jail or in prison? Um... Uh... You wouldn't have to do that, but I mean, if you mess with a dude and he messed up like that, then everybody probably would expect you to. Okay. I'm going to go back to that interview in August of 2016. Do you recall, oh, excuse me, not August 20, 2015, in February 2016, do you recall being here in the Fulton County Jail giving a statement to um, Investigator Gaither again, Investigator Dennis, your attorney was present, and a prosecutor with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, Sir Reed Chata Yes, sir. Can you just, okay. Um, can you all approach, please? Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask your indulgence to, uh, I'm going to let you recess you for just a little bit, and then we'll see where the rest of the day leads us, okay? All right, thank you.
All right, please be seated. All right. Um, Mr. Short, I'm in possession of your motion limit, which you did r remind me of yesterday, or, or initially say yesterday. But how long have you had this particular tape or knowledge of these particular instances? That's my first question to you. <laughs> you got them in discovery, correct? Sir, uh, the... Did you get them in discovery? Yes, the prior... Okay, speaker, then yeah. why are you just now, yesterday, filing, I mean, telling me orally, and not doing what you did in your motion so I could kind of take it up? What, what, I did do it in my motion. No, 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 you filed a motion, but you could have filed this thing months ago. Your Honor, out-of-court statements are not admissible at trial. Okay, that, that's not what I asked you, okay? If, not... you believe, if you believe it was going to be an issue... You could have filed the same motion three, four, five months ago, correct? It's not. It, yes or no? If you want me to say yes, yes, sure. Okay, that's my point. That's my point about being a forewarned judge is a happy judge, okay? Because we are now taking time out, and, and I'm putting a jury in the back on something that you told me yesterday about, but you could have memorialized this in a motion more than three months ago, probably last year, and I could have taken it up, and we could have, I could have ruled on this. I don't have any problem with that, but this is, a, this is an example of something. If you want to do something like this, go ahead and file the motion. You should have filed it months ago. That's what I'm annoyed with. Okay, in your honor, the state... And that's what it means to be prepared as an advocate. Okay. The state's given you this, okay? You knew about these... The state you knew about this issue, right? Perhaps the state, knowing that it's an issue, would not want to admit evidence of an individual being a prosecutor I get and it. a defense I, I, attorney on the same I get time. it, but so you know... So perhaps it's not on me. Perhaps the state should not be... Oh, it's, it's, on, it's on you, okay. and it's, it's on, on them. Uh, it's, it's, on, it's, on it's, on, it's on me. You know why? It's on you because you could have filed this thing months and months ago. And... You could have also had a conversation with the state. I have. Okay, and are, are they going to use this particular information? I, you'd have to ask them. Well, that's not what I asked you. Are you going? Are they going the to state, use Your that Honor. particular information? I cannot speak for the state, Your Honor. Okay. Do you see the problem or the issue that you that you filing this untimely motion has caused? Yes or no? Uh, you're not going to like my answer, so I'm just going to remain silent. That's not being an advocate, because if you can give me a reason as to why you waited months and months, because you probably, when did they give this uh, interviews, the first interview or note that you were going to, about the proffer agreement with Mr. Chada Jimenez? The, the proffer agreement was in the first round of discovery in July of 2022. Okay. When was the other interviews that were made? In to, uh, from 2015 turned over? Uh, July of Okay. So, arguably, Mr. Sharp, this could have been filed sometime in 2022 or early 2023 when we started having these particular motions. Your colleagues, you filed several motions, several preliminary issues I've had to take up. So, that's what I'm telling you I, in terms of just having to stall the proceedings so I can go ahead and take this up. I'm not trying to stall anything, Your Honor. No, 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 no. no uh, and, and I don't mean, and I don't mean you, I, I, listen, listen, I don't mean you like, like just filing this to stall it, okay? Okay. All right, but, the state has but you filed it, but you, but my angst with you, I don't have any angst with you filing a motion. I don't. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just annoyed that you didn't file it in 2023. The state has been fully aware that their colleague, who was a gang prosecutor, was serving as a defense attorney on this case. And okay, I but that's a understand why it's my job to flag that issue. But I have flagged the issue. Okay. And so if I'm going to take now, the now it, I will. you flag the issue now in 20 in, on the ninth, the 10th of April of 2024. Have a seat, sir. Okay. Thank you. State, are you going to be using this um, recording involving, I'm going to mark Mr. Shart's motion in limine as the next court exhibit, but are you going to really use this motion, I mean, use the proffer agreement 
uh, or proffer that Mr. that was held on or about February 16th of 2020, 2016, February 16th, 2016. Yes, and Mr. Murphy continues to go down this line of questioning. And I, I'm i going to tell you, that's a very ethical, problematic thing for you all. Your Honor, and this is what I'll say. Mr. Suri Chata Jimenez waived his conflict and decided to take a defense attorney in this case when he knew he was a prosecutor in 2016. No, but it's you all's use of that. I think that waiving the, waiving, his waiving is another separate issue, okay, which we didn't have to get into because of that particular issue. But utilizing his particular proffer um, that he was involved in might be a problem. But it's a proffer of the state of a, def it's a prior inconsistent statement. But he's, but he's a, but he's a counsel that was involved in this case. Right, but Your Honor, there's no legal basis. There's no ethical basis for for this ruling. There is. He was a state's attorney, like anyone else, can get jobs and move on and do whatever they I want. I know that, and but he. There's a prior inconsistent statement. Who, the whoever the state's representative is, doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, it's a prior inconsistent statement. Well, I think it, it, may, is, it may confuse the jury because the jury's seen Mr. Eminez, Eminez as a defense counsel for another prior accused who is now no longer in this case. So, yes, there is the there is the possibility and the probability that they are going to be confused about that. So can we not just instruct the jury that he was a previously with the state of Georgia and left and got a new job? Like what? There's a remedy for that. The state is not going to harp on the fact that Mr. Jimenez was a prosecutor then, but this is the prior inconsistent statement. He had a previous job, and like anyone else in the world, in the country, they can leave their position and go on to another case. When this case started, Mr. Jimenez knew that this proffer existed. He chose to represent a client in this case. He is no longer sitting. He's no longer representing any of these individuals in the courtroom, Your Honor. So Mr. Jimenez, as a defense attorney or a prosecutor in this case, is of no consequence because he's not even present in these proceedings. His work with this case is completed, Your Honor. The, the sole reason why we're bringing this in has nothing to do with Mr. Jimenez. I it know, has solely to do with the prior inconsistent statement, and the state should be able to confront this witness with any in prior inconsistent statement that he plans on clearly giving during the course of his testimony in court. Today. You'd agree that his that Mr. Chada Jimenez's, um, if if the tape or anything would be utilized, it would have to be redacted. I, I don't agree with that, Your Honor, because he does that. not, and, and a few things about the prof, Your Honor. But you see, well, here's the problem, and here's what I'm going to get on you all about. You all knew this was going to be an issue. We did not. You, 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 like, you, you, discuss, you put this in discovery. Well, we you did put not think one of your this... former colleagues who took a proffer, who then, who then, you, you made it as part of your discovery. So how could you know it wasn't an issue? See, because, Your Honor, we put the proffer because that's the prior consistent statement. It had nothing to do with Mr. I Jimenez. I know, but, the, but... We did but not the, think this was going to be an issue. But the employment issue may be something that the court wanted to take up. Your Honor, but we, the state did not believe that it to be an issue. Until Mr. Shaw brought it to our attention yesterday, the state did not believe believe it to be an issue because... All right, I guess, proffer, I guess you all will be working this weekend then because this is exactly what I told you was going to be a problem. You bring this stuff up, I got a jury sitting in the box, and you got a witness that you're probably going to have days of examination with. So let me go ahead and decide. I'm going to recess for about 10 minutes. We'll make a decision on that. Because, else? and you, Mr. Sharp, no law in your motion or motion in limine for me to consider. You probably need to supplement it with some law. So I'll let you all think about that. I'll be back in 10 minutes. We're in recess.
Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, after reading and considering Mr. Um, Stilwell's motion limiting regarding redaction of out of court statements of Walter Murphy. Um, Okay. Tell you what we've come up with. All right. And what is your agreement? This is all, all council have had an opportunity to take to consider this? Well, Mr. Sharp? Okay. All right. Um, so What's that agreement? Or what have you proffered? We're just going to redact the first, the initial portion of the proffer agreement in which Mr. Surrey Child and Mr. Murphy are going to talk about the proffer and what the proffer is. And then we'll just redact that portion and we'll start the. If we have to play with, we'll start it once they start the interview process. If, if it becomes an issue. If, right, if we're going to decide to play through the interrogator or somewhere else, then we'll, um, do it. but we'll go ahead and get the redactions done so that they're already be completed, and we'll um, give that over to the best counsel they can listen to. All right. Mr. Sharp? So, um, if I understand the proposal correctly, that would... I think take out from the start to about the 10 minute mark. That's where Mr. Chada Jimenez's uh, recognizable involvement is. I would, uh, and and that would be suitable. Suitable now, Your Honor. You have my motion in front of you. There's other um, objectionable parts. Again, this is an out of court statement, so it, it should not be played for the jury unless certain things occur in Mr. Murphy's testimony. Like, these are prior statements, and so I'm not going to assume that his out-of-court statements at different times would be admissible at trial. All I'm saying is if it becomes admissible through the testimony, then there's certain redactions that need to take place. The Mr. Jimenez's involvement was one. There's also talk about separate crimes that are irrelevant to this case. There's um, confrontation clause issues with certain things that the uh, detectives say, certain things that they say they've learned through their investigation, through other witnesses that are here say this is basic stuff, and, and I assume that the state is going to adhere to the rules of evidence. But okay. My whole point was just to identify some of those issues. I don't have any issue with that. I'm just, I'm more irritated that you didn't do it a year ago. Have no issue with you identifying those things. Certainly the things you've mentioned would have some merit and you could have identified them a little bit more timely than now. And just, just because short of agreement, they require my unraveling them and making evidentiary rulings. Like you've identified three court, out of court statements. What were the statements? I, that's just one, that's just one thing. So I'm, like I said, I'm not in any way saying that you filed this motion to just upend or delay it. I'm more annoyed with the timing of it because you had it over a year ago and your, your assertion to me, the state's, was you know we don't you, you don't know that they should be uh, not presenting certain things or or evidence that evidence that you believe uh, should not come in. That's why you file a motion, and that's what just to make it the obvious and go, hey, listen, y'all are not going to be getting into these particular statements. And like you just did just a second ago with you and Miss um, Hilton, you could have uh, by agreement just kind of merited out or or I should say edited out some things that I didn't have to take up and left me with just the corpus of whatever else I needed to kind of take up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm so I, I'm 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 just telling you that that sh there may be other statements and everything else and that's where I still don't know and I still am gonna have to take those up short of agreement. And those are the... There's three, there's three pre-trial uh, statements that Mr. Murphy made. One on, in, in, I believe it's July of 2015, one on August 18th of 2015, and one on February 16th of 2016. Well, I would suggest you put them in writing. Those, and, are, those are in my motion. No, I mean, in terms of what specifically in terms of state... Oh, yes. It's, it's in the motion. 
Everything that I, I find problematic is in the motion, except Mr. Harvey, um, to his credit, also did identify one other issue, and I can add that to the motion or, or supplement it. Mr. Harvey has it written down. Um, it's a conclusory statement by uh, Investigator Gaither, I believe, in the August 18, 2015 motion at one hour and 42 minutes, I believe. So, uh, but I flagged all of them in time stamps. That are within 15 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, possibly fourteen st uh, statements. But your honor, some of these things are there's discussion about a corrupt Atlanta police officer. I I would I wouldn't know why the state would never want to admit that, but I would just put him in is an abundance of caution. There's discussion about a separate murder that's not charged, that has nothing to do with this case. I was just flagging that. I don't know why the state would want to present that. There's conclusory statements by an investigator saying, for instance, I know, I know it was YSL that committed this crime. That based on nothing other than her just saying she knows. That's the type of thing that obviously would not be admissible at trial, and I would think that the state would not. Okay, but, but you still it. have to file the motion and flag it like you did yeah. now, okay. because we could have done this a year ago. We really could have done this a year ago. We really could have. I understand. But again, I don't think that, in, I don't think that based on the testimony so far, I see no reason why these statements would even. Mr. Murphy is here presenting a live testimony. Is the state, what's the state's position on the other statements? Uh, Your Honor, we have not had the opportunity to look at the other statements yet. I believe it was filed while we've been in court, Your Honor. And the state's intention is only to play these statements if we have to impeach Mr. Murphy. So, what we're doing is asking him questions. If he answers them the way that he's answered them previously, we won't have to impeach him. We don't, we don't intend to just play the statement just to play the statement. It would be solely for impeachment purposes. Um, and so what we're doing is we're asking him the question here in court, depending on his answer, we're confronting him with his prior inconsistent statement in order to set up investigator Gaither or investigator Dennis coming in and playing those portions in which he has denied. And so that's what we're doing. The state does not intend to, at this moment, to just play his statement. We know that is improper. However... But Mr. Shard has identified these particular nine statements or whatever else. Like, for example, um, on the July 15th... Your Honor, he just filed it today while we've been in court. So I, ha I haven't had the opportunity to review them to be able to adequately... We could maybe... Con um, have a consent, I, I just haven't seen them to, to be able to process and read it and to know which statements, which of the statements we can cons consent to, or if there needs to be a motion because we disagree. There might be some that we consent to, there might be some that we can um, agree upon, but there might be others that we may have to have argument. The state just needs an opportunity to review the motion to be able to adequately uh, make an argument to the court, Your Honor.
have your seat, Ms. Charlotte? Oh, you can have your seat. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. How long are these statements, um, <laughs> these three sets of statements? Um, let's, <coughs> let's start out with um, an hour. All right, there's a statement that was given on July 15th of 2015, another one given on August the 18th of 2015, and a last one that was given on February the 16th of 2016. Yes. The um, one from July of 2015, I think it's about an hour, maybe 20 minutes, Your Honor. The one from August of 2015 is about an hour and 45 minutes. And the one from February of 2016, there's two parts, part one and part two. The totality of that is about 55 minutes. Well, there's another portion which is eight minutes long, but it's you can barely hear it, and we would we don't need that portion. Would be the two twenty five minute portion. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. <clears throat> How many of these last? How many statements? How many statements? Statements one, four, five, no. Twelve, thirteen. Twelve. Thirteen? There's just three statements. No, but there's there's three statements from A through right. through um L. And Your Honor, just to let the court know, this isn't an issue that will be right anytime soon because we haven't finished confronting Mr. Murphy. So he may say everything that he said before. And we would not be playing the statements through Mr. Murphy. We would be playing them through Investigator Gaither. Um, which could be the uh, next one, so depending on Ms. Montgomery's status, um, two more witnesses. So it, just about the court. But we do have to confront the witness if he does. We want to be clear. We do have to confront Mr. Murphy 
with this prior inconsistent statement before we would actually play the statement. So I would have had to ask some questions about it, um, but we would not be playing the actual recording. There are 13 statements that Mr. Harvey offered, 12 of many 13 Mr. Harvey made. There's at least 12 or 13 statements. Him, uh, him being Mr. Murphy. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. It's going to take the better part of the day for me to go ahead and do that short of agreement. So my suggestion to you is I discharge the jury for tomorrow, not have them come in, and we'll take this up on Friday, though you'll come in on Saturday. I, I told you this was going to happen. I, and I didn't want to, I don't want to have to do it, but this is not... Well, how, what we signed up for, what those jurors signed up for. I don't, I'm not saying, Mr. Sharp, the motion isn't of merit. I'm in no way saying that. It's the timing and it's, and it's just, we just cannot keep doing this. So it's going to take me the better part of a day to go ahead and do this. You got 13 statements. I got to rule upon. Unless you all tonight work out all of the, work out something in terms of the admissibility of those statements. If you do that, then I won't have to take them up. That's my, that's my, that's my offer to you. But short of that, I'm going to excuse the jury and go ahead and do that. So do you all want to have a couple minutes to chat? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, to, um, Ms. Herning, I'm telling our jurors another 15 minutes, okay? All right, I'll give you 15 minutes. You let me know what you want to do. All right, where are
court is. Yes, Your Honor. We've had an opportunity to go over the motion, Your Honor, and there are a few um, of the particular statements that the state and the defense have agreed that the state would not be getting into. Um, I can let the court know what those letters are. Yeah, I've, I I have the motion, which I've marked as a, as a court exhibit. So the statement started A on page three. So you want to start from there or do you need to go further? We can start. I would prefer to start with the ones we agree with and then focus on the ones that we don't agree That's on. That's fine. Whatever you put. So, so the ones that we agree that we would not, um, the state would not be intending to get into is letter D. That's the August 18th, 2015 statement at 44 minutes. Uh, yes. That's D. The next one, Your Honor, is letter E. That's the same date at 49 minutes. The next one is G, but we do have to clarify something with That's G. That's G at 103 and zero, zero. And while the state does not intend to ask Mr. Murphy to speculate as to who shot the bus, we do believe Mr. Murphy was present at least at the compound nightclub, which is where um, the group of individuals um, that shot the bus were prior to the bus shooting. But that so, doesn't have anything to do with the statement. Correct. But we want to be clear that we do intend on getting to some details of surrounding this statement, but not to ask Mr. Murphy to speculate as to who shot the bus up. No. Um, the next statement that the state and defense agree upon is H with a caveat. That H is the one, a state eight, August 15th, August 18th, 2015 statement at 107. Yes, um, we do not intend to go into the murder that Mr. Murphy discusses. However, there are some individuals that he speaks about, and we will ask him if he knows certain people, but not to go into the facts of that unrelated murder. All right, I. Um, oh, no, no, what's the next one? I'm so, sorry. So the next one is I, Your Honor. The okay. state does not intend to get into I. And I is the... Um, August 18, 2015 statement at 1-17-50. Yes, Your Honor. And then last is L, uh, which is what we've already discussed, Your Honor. And that is the 20, that is a February 16, 2016 proffer um, from OO, uh, basically the start of the tape to 12 minutes. Yes, and we just need to look at the 16-minute portion of it, but I think that we can agree upon that. But we just need to, we know definitely about the 12 minutes, because that's the early part in which Mr. Um, Jimenez is going over the proper. Um, we just need to look at the 16-minute mark, but I don't think that'll be an issue. Mr. Shaw, are you in agreement with D, E, G, H, I, and L? Yes, Sean. So I still need to take up A. Yes. B. Yes. C. And A, B, and C, Your Honor, are all within 16, it's essentially 16 minutes. It's three different segments within 16 minutes on one <clears throat> statement. F is also what I have to take up. Is that correct? So which one, Your Honor? F. Yes. And, and, and do you want to discuss oh, that? F, we, Your Honor. We discussed F. F is my concern about F, Your Honor, is That's the statement on August the 18th, 2015, right. at 5820. And Investigator Dennis is basically telling Mr. Hudson, Attorney Hudson, and Walter Murphy what he saw that night at Compound. Now, if Investigator Dennis takes the stand, my, 
you know, I, I get it. He's going to be subject to cross-examination. I anticipate his statements will be similar to this, so that that wouldn't be an issue. My only issue was to be playing Investigator Dennis's statements about what he saw as a witness before he testifies. And what the state and is subject to cross examination. That was my only issue. And, and so the state plans on calling him. Then, I, I mean, if the state enters this through Investigator Dennis, then that probably takes care of that issue. Exactly, Your Honor. I mean, we told um, defense counsel that if we introduce this through another detective, then we can deal with redacting it. However, if it's through Investigator Dennis, then we believe the issue will resolve itself. All right, I don't see any reason why why that would not be the case. So I, I'm in, I'm agreeing with agreeing with you, counsels. So other than A, B, C, so the really only other two, left? J and K, Your Honor. J involves there's allegations throughout this case that an APD officer who's still on the force, I'll point out my understanding is corrupt and on the take um i don't i wasn't planning on turning that into a mini trial about corrupt police officers not really relevant to our case so but why would it be admissible you're on there might be some parts that are relevant so we would just ask to hear such them. as i need the, to look oh. john the officer there are certain things that happen within the dexter montgomery um investigation that uh, pertain to that person. That's why we're asking to allow us to argue it tomorrow. The Dexter Montgomery investigation was conducted by the particular person that they're talking about. So Last one. And if we just have a moment, that's how we are asking. If we do have to have the motion tomorrow, Your Honor, we don't believe this is going to take all day. We don't. I think the defense and um, the state believe that this will take about an hour and a half um, to discuss. If we look at the totality of the minutes of the six sections, Your Honor. We believe total the six sections are is roughly 30 minutes. When you look at the timestamps of where um, we are going to need to have argument, Your Honor. So we don't believe that this will be something where the um, court has to be down the entire day. Um, unless, the, unless it was already going to be a half a day, that's, that's a different conversation. But if it was going to be a full day, Your Honor, the state believes that even if we came in, and I believe tomorrow is one of our 845 days, that... Yes. If we came in at 845, I do believe we could be done arguing this, if not by lunch, if not before lunch, definitely by lunch. And, and Your Honor, lest I forget, um, Attorney Harvey's contribution, oh, which is 818.15 at one hour and 42 minutes, and that is, um, according to my notes, there's no transcript that's been prepared, but my notes is Investigator Gaither opining that YSL killed Donovan Thomas in, in a conclusive state. And of course, she's not a witness to anything and, and we would object to that as well. That wouldn't be relevant anyways, would it? I mean. We, we just need to see what, what if any Mr. I mean, Murphy's response, we just need to look at that portion one more time, at least to go back to our, um, to actually watch the video again, just to hone in on that particular section. What? What, um, so this is on the August um, 18, 2015 video at one hour and 42 minutes in the video. So it's a total of seven statements, Your Honor. And again, we believe if we come in at 845, we would definitely conclude, if not before lunch, by lunch.
I really would like you all to conclude this so that I don't have to, I don't have to park this jury for a, for a half a day or a day. Now, I appreciate you all working together, and this is kind of what you should have done all along. I mean, I just, I, this is why I, this is what I told you all. I mean, this ain't your first rodeo, and both of you all, this is not your first case you've tried, either one of you, no, none of you. So, so in that respect, if you all can work something out, um, so it sounds like you all been working pretty well in terms of, in terms of your agreement as to these statements. Um, so you've got one A, B, C, F, you're, uh, we're not going to cover in, unless it becomes an issue, J and K, correct? Correct. And, and if I hear you, Ms. Um, Hilton, you're saying that you all need to listen to those statements. Is that correct? Particularly, yes, all of them. Um, yes, we need to relist to all of them again this, this evening once court concludes. If we have any more concessions, we can definitely reach out to the fence this evening. But we do believe at least A through C we're going to have to argue. I don't think we're going to concede on A through C. For sure. I, I don't. We won't be conceding on A, B, and C. A covers um, Mr. Murph's claims his life's in jeopardy. Uh, B covers the same day, July 15th, at about 35 minutes, repeats statements. Is, is going, his statement's going to get him killed. And he repeats this at 48, 30, and 1 minute and 20 seconds. And then July 15th, 47, he complains of the investing officers are jeopardizing his, his safety by telling... Mr. Williams Sr. that Mr. Murphy was involved or brought down to speak to the detectives. Mr. Shard, it may the statements may be admissible depending upon what they're what circumstances they're they're being offered for. It's a little bit like it depends on what on, on what's asked of Mr. Murphy. It really does. Well, and I, under, I understand that some of this has to play out to give your honor context. I'll point out that when you watch the statement, um, you're left with the impression initially that it's a little bit misleading because you're left with the impression that Mr. Murphy fears Jeffrey Williams or people associated with him. Later on, he clarifies, I'm not going to say anyone's name respectfully, but he identifies other people that he's scared of, that he's really scared of. And it's not Mr. Williams, it's not Mr. anyone associated, or it's not any family members of Mr. Williams, and it's not anyone charged in this case. But I think that's grounds for cross-examination. If the state yeah. doesn't ask him that question, then defense counsel can cross him on, weren't you re referencing these other individuals and not and that's if we go down that line of question. Again, this is all premature because the line of question might not be as to a specific person. I, I, it depends on what the line of questioning is, but I do believe that what Mr. Shard's issue, er, issue is, that's an area for cross-examination. Yeah, I, it's not necessarily improper bad character evidence. It'd be relevant. It'd be relevant to show to, to, uh, to, to, uh, for other purposes. Mr. Steele? Uh, Your Honor, I'll get you the cases. I just have, I can't get on Lexus in your courtroom for some reason, but um, it's going to be when, this is witness intimidation, um, but I will get you the exact uh, um, site. Um, I'll get you more updated cases, but this is, it should not implicate Mr. Williams. Nobody, it should not be his name if it's, if it's in the mind of, of the uh, person who's intimidated, they could possibly say something like that to show why they're reluctant to testify or to cooperate or to give a statement, but it shouldn't fall back on Mr. Williams 
unless Mr. Williams did something, ordered somebody to do something, had a third party to do something. So it would be um, inadmissible character. But I will get you the cases. Is there any discussion in this tape about any underlying reason or rationale? Um, the, I mean, I think it's the general nature of coming to speak to the police and snitching and what that perception is. And then right. that is what Mr. Murphy is kind of trying to communicate. The fact that he is even in here could get him in trouble. He, he doesn't specifically say anyone did anything. Right. Um, but... He doesn't name any particular people. It's just the thought of well, what people saw. He, I mean, he says that... He says that Mr... When he got arrested, that Mr. Williams Sr. saw him talking to a police officer, and that could potentially get him killed. The fact that someone saw him speaking to the police. Um, but that was his observation, his feelings, given his life, and they can cross him on that. They can cross him, did Mr. Williams ever um, threaten you? They can cross him, did Mr. Williams Sr. ever um, threaten you? They can then cross him on that line of questioning as to why he felt that way. But it's not a bad case. But we would like to look at this case, and if Mr. Still has any other cases, we just ask for him to email those to us so we can look at those in preparation. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call our jurors in and excuse them for the evening. I'm going to tell them to come at 10.30. Okay. Got from 8.30 until uh, and 8, 8.45 until the jury comes in at at 1030, yes. uh, if we can take up whatever it is uh, we need to take up, then um, the matter will be satisfied. If not, then uh, we'll be working on Saturday at least. Okay. I think we can accomplish it in that hour and 15 minutes. Mr. Shard. Thank you. Sound our jurors, please. Can we get Mr. Murphy back here, please? Thank you, madam. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the jury and Mr. Murphy, sorry that we took up so much time and we're taking up a matter we need to resolve. Um, given the fact that it is the end of the business day, I'm going to have you all recess until tomorrow. Um, and if I can ask you all to come in for 10 hundred hours tomorrow for an anticipated 1030 start time, and then we'll go ahead and um, see where the day leads us at that point in time. I am going to tell you that we'll probably work until almost one o'clock and then we'll take an hour or so for lunch at that point, come back and then we'll see where the afternoon leads us at that point. Um, Friday morning, uh, we will have a one o'clock start time. Okay, and then what I'll do on Friday is I'll handicap the rest of the month for you at that point. Again, we'll just go through that in maybe the first part of May. All right? Um, Mr. Murphy, uh, we will, I'll excuse you till tomorrow morning. Uh, if you could be here for, for 10, 10 o'clock, okay? And then we'll, uh, We'll call you when we, uh, when we when we start up again, okay? Okay. All right, okay. don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys and your counsel, all right? Okay. okay.
Ladies and gentlemen, any ministerial inquiry of me at this point? Okay, so tomorrow, be here for 10 hours. We'll start about 10.30, and um, we'll probably recess probably around 12.45 or thereabouts, and then uh, we'll come back probably around the 2 p.m. hour and go to about um, 5, between somewhere between 5 and 6 o'clock tomorrow, okay? All right. Um, let's review your ad nauseum admonitions. Leave your notepads in the basket. Uh, don't discuss the matter amongst yourselves in onesies or twosies as you go and go about getting back home, uh, wherever it is you live in our fair county. Um, please do not let any third parties discuss this case with you uh, in your presence and hearing. If anybody should try and do that or approach you as this case, let myself and Sergeant Ingram know immediately. Um, don't go by any of the scenes that are visited or depicted or heard you've heard of thus far in this case. Um, do not listen to any third party recaps or otherwise of this particular matter, any blogs or any news media or any other printed sources, as you as I told you earlier and I and I and I keep reiterating to you, is that you can only consider what's presented to you within the four walls of this courtroom. And of course, you're not to handicap the case or talk about the case uh, at all until this case is properly submitted to you for your consideration. I give you instructions on how to how to begin your deliberative process. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. And the last thing is, again, thank you for your patience with us, um, and we really appreciate the patience you've given us, and will continue to give us in the resolution of this matter. So, unless you have anything else for any one of um, any, any, anything uh, that I need to take up, I'll go ahead and recess you for the evening. We'll see you in the morning, okay? All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if not, all rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our jury has left us. Um, unless there's anything I need to cover with you all, I'll see you all tomorrow morning, uh, 845. Uh, if you have any further agreements or anything else, uh, be prepared to uh, cover those tomorrow morning. And uh, is there anything else? Nothing. If not, I will see you all in the morning at, at, for 845. Thank you. Yes, please. Let's see if you like to